and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you on behalf of Global Organization for Dignity India Trust to our sixth edition of Udyog, a one-of-a-kind career exploration program. Global Organization for Divinity, founded by His Holiness Maharanyam Shri Shri Muridhara Swamiji, functions in several parts of the world with the principle humanity and divinity are inseparable. And amidst our various activities, our main focus has been on activities related to students, children, and young adults. And in the various initiatives we have taken for the youth, if I may mention a few of them, it is our Gopakutiram Weekend Heritage School, which has more than 5,000 students who have enrolled around the world, to whom we teach ancient Indian texts, our Puranas. We have our annual motivational lecture and student mass prayer, which benefits more than one lakh students every single year. We have our annual inter-school Indian heritage quiz called Puranava, which is an event to which several schools look forward to each year. We have our art and literary fest called Samskriti, in which students from schools across Chennai come and exhibit their creativity on various topics from Srimad Ramayan, from Srimad Bhagavatam, Viduraniti, Arthashastra, and so on. We also conduct several workshops on life skills for children and youth as a part of GOD and in collaboration with governments and NGOs in India and overseas. One such venture is our Udyog, which was begun as ordained by our spiritual master in order to encourage students to choose careers in which they can work to become and not just to acquire. And each year in Udyog, we have a panel of speakers who have become successful and popular in the unique career paths that they have chosen. And not just that, they have also made sure that they have contributed to the preservation of our culture and heritage. And for today's event, before I welcome our speakers, we as an organization offer our respects to our dear Maha Maho Padhyaya, Shastra Ratnakara, Ullai Vasil, Shri Krishnamurti Shastrigal Mama. We are really honored to have you with us. We extend our most respectful welcome to our first speaker, Professor Dr. K. Ramasubramanyam Ji, who is no stranger to our ashram, who, on whom we take immense pride that one from our family has taken our glorious Indian heritage to several global platforms, an inspiring soul who not just preaches our traditions, values, and customs and culture, but also practices them. We welcome you and thank you, sir, for being here today, uh, despite you having to set on your two long international trips immediately after our program. Thank you for your time. A hearty welcome to Sri Shantanu Gupta ji, who has come all the way from Uttar Pradesh for this program, with, whom, with whose Ramayana school, our faculty of Gopakutiram Heritage School have had the privilege to be associated with. And after having known Shantanu ji, I know how each day of uh, a typical day in his life goes, where he keeps switching roles between being a, an author, a speaker, a political analyst, a political advisor, a regular participant in television debates, and so on. I can keep uh, reading his profile, which we will do later when he's about to speak. And uh, despite such a tight schedule, he is here with us today. Thank you so much, sir. Our most loving welcome to Sri Jayakumar, who's here today, to whom I got introduced to a lovely friend and a mentor, Dr. Chitra Madhavan. And uh, on reading his profile up, his journey in the internet, what really uh, inspired me was that at each accomplishment of his, he kept calling himself a student and a seeker. 
and rightfully so because our roots are so deep and so profound that we can only keep seeking and seeking and seeking and being astonished with everything we find and the lovely part of what he does is in this quest of which he has set himself upon he has made it his life mission to pass on all the knowledge that he gains in his search to the younger generations which is really applaudable and from our first conversation which we instantly connected we are sure that this is a friendship a meaningful friendship that we will cherish for a lifetime because of the same purpose and cause for which both our organizations function our fourth speaker for today who's yet to arrive is miss uh, deepthi akki a very inspiring and vibrant uh, true example of nari shakti who is an empathetic soul who's taken up who's dedicated her career towards the holistic well-being of every individual of our community she contributes to the progress of each and every one's physical mental and emotional health and our fifth speaker who is again here to arrive is shrimati janaki sabe who absolutely no needs no introduction she is a very popular face to all of us in south india and uh, she has been very kind enough to squeeze in her time between two already committed uh, programs before and after our event so she is yet to arrive we are awaiting her entry and finally a big welcome and a big thank you to all of you students without whose enthusiastic participation none of our events will be as successful and as productive and as meaningful as they have been all these years my heartfelt welcome and thanks to all the schools and college college managements principals teachers and parents for being an integral part of all our events for the past uh, 11 12 years and uh, before i leave the stage to mr vignesh to take over to introduce the speakers i really hope i sincerely hope that today's session inspires in all of you ideas and discussions to choose a career path by which you will not only contribute to making to the well-being of our country but to also make sure that the wondrous whispers from ancient india echo in every nook and corner of the world thank you Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. Uh, humble pranams and respects to all these speakers who have come today, and a very good morning to all of you. Uh, our first speaker for the day is Professor Dr. K. Ramasubramanian. He is an institute chair professor at the Cell for Indian Science and Technology in Sanskrit, IIT Bombay. He holds a doctorate in theoretical physics, a master's in Sanskrit, and a bachelor's in engineering. His area of research has been primarily focused to bring out the major contributions of Indians. in particular the kerala school of astronomy and mathematics which flourished in the medieval period he has been associated with the preparation of the three most important works of kerala school namely tantra sangraha ganita yukti basa and karana paddhati which have brought out the pioneering contributions of kerala school in the development of mathematics of infinite series as well as proposing better models for describing the motion of mercury and venus a couple of centuries before their emergence in europe In 2008, he was conferred the prestigious Maharishi Badrayan Vyas Samman by the President of India. In 2019, he also got elected as a Fellow of the Indian National Science Academy. One of his short video clips pertaining to the computation of pi has garnered more than 1.3 million views. Another uh, very notable and uh, a proud information that we'd like to share is he was invited as a speaker in the International Congress of Mathematicians in Russia last month. And that goes on to say and show his contribution to the society as a whole. Uh, we welcome you, sir. Take over the gathering today.
So my humble pronouns to Guruji and uh, all the devotees who have assembled here. I am extremely delighted. What? I know you. So I am extremely delighted to be associated with this event. And uh, when Srimati Janani was describing the kind of activities that this organization has been doing, I was quite thrilled. This is something which is extremely important. And this phrase also work to become, not to acquire, was quite interesting and uh, it was a bit intriguing to me. So in one way, what, does, what do you gather by work to become and not to acquire? So in a, perhaps they meant you have to be an achiever in a particular area, you have to become someone and not to acquire the material things. I was actually thinking the moment I read, it just stuck to me, one can also put it the other way around, work to acquire and not to become. So this is because, see this, what happens today is when I meet the students, they are primarily interested only in what is it that we gain by gaining this. So we have to focus ourselves and that is how all people who have been great achievers in arts have dedicated their lives work to acquire skills work to acquire knowledge in fact some of you would have read this phrase in bhagavad gita nahi jnanena sadrisham pavitra niha vidyate so this is something which has to be deeply rooted in you there cannot be a greater purifying agency than Nya. There cannot be a greater joy giving instances than engaging in something and gaining this knowledge. Be it music, be it arts, be it any other discipline. So this is something which is very, very important. Not to become some X or Y. I mean that is anyway something which happens and most of the world is after it. So this is something which you have to really gain and uh, I think the organization has been working towards it. My journey into this has been by providence. I fortunately was born in a traditional family which was rooted in Vedic tradition. So I could acquire something from the family but then I was actually traveling through the path which most of us travels in the science area. But incidentally, it just happened that soon after my master's, so there was a certain project where I had to involve myself to look into some of these ancient texts which have been written in Sanskrit which has to do with science. So this actually completely changed my perspective about the Indian tradition, which is what I want to basically share with you, and we need more and more people. So I just uh, take you through this. So what do the adjectives ancient and Indian? This, uh, this topic, ancient Indian mathematics and astronomy, has been chosen by them. What do you mean by ancient and Indian? Maths is maths. Two plus two is two. Wherever you are. So what is Indian about it? So to astronomy, in fact, I was actually questioned. So in uh, 2004, when I went to US consulate for getting my visa, so he was asking me, what is the purpose for which you are traveling to US? I said, I am going to deliver a talk on Indian astronomy. The next question was, what is Indian about astronomy? Astronomy is astronomy. This is what he was asking. Then I instantaneously said, there are two aspects to it. One aspect I will tell you, the other aspect which I will not be able to describe to you right now. I said, geographically what has been developed here, a particular knowledge system, I mean is identified with. So when I say you are a human being, so I am an Indian, so you are a US citizen, right? So human being is human being, so 
it is not that. So similarly, this adjective can be viewed that way, but there are more serious things to that, which you will learn as we progress further. So when I say this ancient, so this is something which has to do with at least 3,000, 4,000 years old, which you will see in one of the slides. So how did it develop, get developed? So the context in which it got developed, the content, so the form in which it has got developed is something which is far more beautiful, which you will be able to see. And then there are a couple of things which I want to say about the history and historiography of it. Normally the kind of picture that one has about India is, so we have been more of a spiritual orientation rather than orienting ourselves to explore science and technology, which is not true. This is the impression that I carried. So till I completed my masters. So this kind of uh, picture that we carry is not quite true. And fortunately, I would say that this national education policy which has been drafted recently has come up with certain schemes by which we will be able to educate our own people about our own rich scientific heritage. This is something which is extremely important for us to know. And uh, in fact, there are so many lectures which have been delivered by various scholars, so which will make you realize that the kind of mathematics that you learn in school is all primarily India of origin. Okay? All the school mathematics, I would just say, in fact, even the higher mathematics, so it has its origin in India, but we do not know a single mathematician. At least some people come up with the name Saryabhata Bhaskara, but uh, Till I completed my MSc, I did not know even these two things. Okay. So that is how most people are. So that India has produced so many great mathematicians and technicians is something which we should know. What are the things that have been done? The decimal place value system, which seems to be trivial today. So suppose I ask you to multiply 248 by 322. So you can write 248 and 322 and then you can do. Suppose I were to ask you, do the same multiplication by representing the number in Roman numeral. Will you ever be able to do that? Suppose you have to write 322 and then multiply this. How would you do? So this is something which is of Indian origin. So that actually gave leverage to all our exploration in science and technology. This is one of the fun, most fundamental discoveries about which we do not realize the importance. Then we have certain important things related to Sulva Sutras and so on. This Pandini Shastra Vithayi and Pingala Chandra Shastra, about which I will not dwell today, they form the bedrock of most of the scientific things which we claim that we have achieved in the recent times. The, see, what is important in mathematics is the ideas are more important than the applications. So, these ideas get formulated here. Then we have a galaxy of astronomers, Aryabhata, Brahmagupta, Lalla, and so on. And uh, have, you, have you heard of indeterminate equation? Any students here? Indeterminate equation. Anyone? College going student? Suppose I say 3x is equal to 5. You will say x is 5 by 3, right? So this is a determinate equation. Determinate. Suppose I say 3x plus 4y is equal to 8, 8 is it, or simply 8. So you have two variables and one equation, and therefore you call it as indeterminate. It can be first order, it can be second order. Okay. So the solutions for both equations were first discovered in India. If at all you can solve, you will get infinite number of solutions. So this is something which is phenomenal in terms of mathematics. And then we have something called infinite series for phi and so on. Generally, the world goes by, there is an interesting phrase, Gatan Gatiko Lokaha, Naloka Paramarthikaha. So all those achievers who have done anything in their own fields, they are not simply carried away by the way, but they have set their own goals and they have become someone. Right? So that is something which we need to know. And uh, so all of you, so who are just passing out of school corridors now, so you will be passing to a certain college, whichever college it is. So fortunately, this scheme is likely to make people aware of their own heritage. So this has been very nicely done. So this 
National education policy now it says a rootedness and pride in India. So this is something which is what they are trying to do, whether it is this God organization or any other organization. So this rootedness is something which is extremely important, which is what is being attempted by these organizations. And of course, the second aspect is pride. They too are extremely important in the national building. So if you want to build the nation and take it to higher status, these are extremely important. And it says among the fundamental principles that will guide the education system at large, as well as the individual institutions within it, is included the rootedness and pride in India. And it's rich, diverse, ancient, and the modern cultural knowledge systems in the tradition. So this is something which we have to keep in mind. Unfortunately, so the people who formulated this have very beautifully came up with this. The rich heritage of ancient and eternal Indian knowledge and thought has been the guiding light of this policy. The pursuit of knowledge, jnana, wisdom, prajna and truth was always considered in Indian thought and philosophy as the highest human goal. How old is the exploration of science in India, science as we call it today. If you look at the Thangogya Upanishad, we have this passage, Adihi Bhagavaha Sanatkumaram Naradaha. So it just goes on, and then Narada says, I know this, I know this. So he lists almost 25 topics. If you just see, Rig Vedam, Bhagavad, Kemi, Ijar Vedam, Sama Vedam, Matar Vedam, Chaturtham, Ijihada Puranam, Panchama, Vedanam, Vedam, Sitriam, Rajim, Daim, Nithim, Vako Vakyam, see, Ekayam, Deva Vidyam, Brahma Vidyam, Bhuta Vidyam, Chatra Vidyam, Nakshatra Vidyam, Sarpa Deva Jana Vidyam, Yetat Bhagavaha Adhemi. So he says that I know all of them. So he gives a long list. Then he says, So Ham Bhagavaha. Mantra Videva Asmi Na Atma Vit. So this is where it just comes to the higher spiritual plane. I just wanted to list this to you. This is a passage from Upanishad where you have a variety of things listed here. So for instance, Nakshatra Vidya, essentially amongst to Jyotisha, Vako Vakyam, Dharka Shastram, and so on and so forth. So these are all things, purely scientific things which they have been pursuing in those days. This is an interesting quotation from someone called John Playfair. This John Playfair wrote an interesting article which is called The Astronomy of the Brahmins. It is written in 1790. So how old is it? If you want to see, he was puzzled by the extraordinary accuracy with which Indians have been able to calculate the planetary positions. Okay? So where is the sun, where is the moon, when will see? You, would all, you, would, you all would have studied eclipses, right? Somewhere in the school level. How will you predict when an eclipse will happen? It has to do with careful study of the motion of the sun and the moon, the plane in which they move, the angle with which they move, and the velocity with which they move, how long the eclipse will take place, etc. These require tremendous ability to compute. And it also requires meticulous observation for hundreds and thousands of years, without which you will not be able to predict these phenomena with accuracy. Now, he was thoroughly puzzled by the extraordinary precision with which the Indians have been able to do, which was far superior compared to those in other traditions like Ptolemy. Okay? So he says this could all be pure coincidence, this is one hypothesis. The second hypothesis is there should have been a Newton among the Brahmins. Okay, he says to discover the universal principle and so on and Lagrange and so on. The third possibility is observations were made in India when all the Europe was barbarous and uninhabited. And those made in Europe 5000 years afterwards coming mutual. So this is the third hypothesis is what actually is true. So the point I wanted to convey was so the scientific tradition in India, basically science is observation, carefully noting down, doing inference, that is all. And of course, keep records, this is also Agama. So Pratyaksha, Anumana, 
and argonaut. So these three play an important role and uh, this is at least thousands of years old and this is something which we need to know. The science of astronomy is actually called as Kala Vidhana Shastra. Kala Vidhana Shastra. Kala is by Vidhana is making sort of divisions. So this particular time at this point and so on. So this point is called Kala Vidhana Shastra. Okay. How do you know one year is over? 365 days count. Why 365? Why 366? So why is 1 month 30 days? Why is 1 month 29 days? Does it have any meaning? So these are all certain questions. So we keep dividing time and there are some interesting things which I don't have right now to discuss but this is something which you have to keep in mind. In fact, the entire division of time whether it is a year or a month or a week whatever it is, it all has its astronomical basis. Normally this is not taught in schools. We just think of some uh, calendar which is arbitrarily done, some 29 days in one month, sometimes 28 days, sometimes 31 days, which is all totally meaningless. Okay? Our calendrical system on the other hand has basis on what is happening in the sky. This is something which you have to keep in mind. So Panchanga that we have is something, so this is the, these are the two bodies, Earth here, Moon here and Sun here. They form the basis for the whole calendrical system. How many of you have studied Sanskrit in school? Please raise your hand. Sanskrit. I am not going to ask anything, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only a small number? I see. Okay, fine. So the, the thing is, so most of the texts have been beautifully composed in the form of metrical pattern. For instance, all of us would have learned how to solve quadratic equation. This is how the quadratic equation is placed. The quadratic equation here, you just see. Bale, marala, kulamula, dalani, sapta, dile, vila, sabharam, thalaganya, pashyam, kurvacca, keli, kalaham, kalaham, sayugnum, shetam, jale, vada, marala, kulapramanam. It is a beautifully rhythmically composed verse. This is one of the verses from Bhaskaracharya. This basically gives you this equation x square minus 7 x by 2 is equal to 2. You have to solve this equation. So, the idea behind is so you are simultaneously exposed to language, you are exposed to poetry, which itself is a beautiful medium. And you also learn mathematical principles in the form of verses so that you don't actually forget anything. Okay? So you have several advantages. See, this you would have seen. Area of a circle is pi r square, area of a sphere is 4 pi r square, volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. All of you have studied this. So this is again beautifully presented in the form of single verse. See, so one single verse which will give you all the necessary formula that you have to remember. So most of the formula, many people forget this formula. So if you have just memorized it in the form of verses, it is there with you forever. So that is the advantage that we have in presenting mathematics in metrical form. Many of us would not have studied this interesting topic in mathematics. This is called magic squares. Do you know to construct magic squares? No? Okay. See, one thing which I wanted to tell you is constructing magic square is one thing. Normally, we say the sum of the row, the sum of the column, the sum of the diagonal, right? Look at this square here. Not only the row, not only the column, not only the main diagonal, but the other diagonals also here will add up. You just see 14 plus 12 plus 5 plus 3, that is 34. You understand? So you just consider 10 and then 11, 7, 6, that will be 34. You just take this 15 and then go on the other side, 14, 2, 3, that will be 34. This is what is called pan diagonal magic square. Pan diagonal means even the off diagonal element. So how to construct this kind of squares is something which has been a forte 
by at least the 14th century so this is an interesting thing which normally people do not teach so when you make children do this they gain proficiency in arithmetic they gain proficiency how to do mental calculations and so on so hopefully in the next few years when the mathematical texts are being revised so this will be a part of the text so there are a few other things which i wanted to just tell so this uh, you in schools would not have come across what is known as infinite series but at least you would know arithmetic series right so geometric series suppose you add 1 plus see you look at the series this is something which is very interesting 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 plus 1 by 9. All the odd numbers appear here, right? All the odd numbers appear, and it is an alternating series. And this series will never end, and that is what is actually pi. You know the number pi? What is it? 3.14. Will it be ever ending the decimal place? Why? <laughs> Why would some some number not end? Huh? So this is something which is a very very interesting thing. So you can see some of the videos, but I just want to tell you that this infinite series has been beautifully codified in the form of a verse. Vyase vadi thi nihate, rupa dhrte vyasa sarga rathi hate. त्रिशरादि विषम संख्या भक्तम जनम सुम प्रतक्रमण कुरियात तो इट्स एन अमेजिंग सीरीज आई वाज क्वाइट थ्रिल्ड टू रीड दिस फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सो ऑलमोस्ट 25 इयर्स बैक सो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज देयर इन द इंडियन ट्रेडिशन ऑलमोस्ट 3 सेंचुरीज बिफोर इट वाज डिस्कवर्ड इन यूरोप ओके नॉर्मली वी अस्क्राइब द सीरीज टू ग्रिगरी लिबिनियस एंड सो ऑन बट दिस हैज टू बी अस्क्राइब टू मार्थवा Okay. The other thing that the last thing I wanted to just tell you was, even the textbooks when they are authored, unfortunately they do not give the correct history. So there are very various reasons for that. One is simple; anybody can guess. It is out of ignorance, but it does not seem to be the cause for not including. I will just give you a reason. in the words of europeans themselves ha huh, this notation pi which you use where does it come from circumference by diameter circumference by diameter correct i'm happy the notation is different right circumference by diameter is the physical meaning of the number pi which is a transcendental number but the circumference the diameter is different so this is pi value but the notation actually comes from this see pi e etc it is called peripherion so in the greek notation it starts with pi and therefore they have started using pi so the thing that i wanted to convey to you was when you trace the history of how this number came so we have the historians recording something like aryabhata and then they will jump to 1600 aryabhata was in 5th century okay so they just uh, ignore what has happened in between and they just jump to this and it is not due to ignorance i just wanted to point out to you there is a person called alex bello who came to interview me in iit bombay after having talked to me for about uh, half an hour the final question that he asked me was it has become fashionable for people to say that calculus was discovered in india what is your view on that okay ah uh, fashionable this is what he told i said uh, something but then the point i want to convey is he hands over a book to me and then departs as a gift when i flipped through the book after a couple of weeks i was surprised to read this in his book he says for 2000 years the only way to pinpoint pi was using polygons but in 17th century libinus and grigory assured with this series so this fellow definitely knows 
that calculus involves this discovery of all this series, which is three centuries before. That is why he poses this question to me. But then he hands over a book which completely hides this information. So this is what you need to know. And this has been there. Students, I would like to draw your attention to how this knowledge tradition has been preserved in India for hundreds and thousands of years. Today, all of us have this iPad, these various devices, computers. And in those days, the only medium that people had to preserve the document for posterity to just see that it doesn't get erased was either to write in bark or to write in palm leaves. See, this is how the manuscript will look like. So this is a palm leaf manuscript where people have scribed with a metallic pin. So this is how they have been meticulously preserving knowledge. And the life of a palm leaf manuscript can be at most a few hundred years at the most if you preserve properly. So it means that people have been scribing. Today you can write, you can erase, you can do various things. But once you do in palm leaf, you can't do anything. So they have been very, very carefully doing all this. So thanks to those people's effort, today we have something to know about our own tradition. And uh, some of you may be very passionate about computer. There is a great man called Donald Luth. He has composed several volumes, The Art of Computing. He is an amazing person whose contribution has been phenomenal. And uh, he writes in one of the things, that my major failing as a teacher was that I wasn't able to get a single one of my 28 PhD students to realize what a thrill it is to work with the source material. What he means by source material is these kinds of things where the ideas got evolved. So this is something which is very, very important for us to know. In fact, this forum is primarily created for exposing you to people who have dedicated themselves. Say for instance, Jay Kumar so has been engaging himself to try to document it, what went hundreds and thousands of years before when the society has completely transformed itself and has become somewhat crazy to mindlessly embrace this modern system and its culture. So these are people, in fact, this Donald Luth posed us a question. There is a phrase called Yamatara Japana Salagam. He asked this question, where does it come from? None of us could give an answer. So we try our best and the record goes only up to 18th century. Before that, when it came to existence, we don't know. So these are people who have been finding this a very, very engaging task. Why would one need to know? So in fact, there is a lot of thrill. So look at the word, what a thrill it was to work. So this is something which is, the thrill is something which is ultimately the purpose of life. It can be in dance, it can be in any art form. So that is what is very important. So all these uh, important discoveries, so you might have got exposed to calculus at least derivatives and so on. Even these things are found in the form of verses. Okay, so that is something which we need to know. Last but a couple of slides. So the colonial scholars, when they were studying some of these Indian traditions, some were fascinated and they wanted to communicate to the other world. When they write these papers, so the kind of prejudice that was prevalent is very evident from this. See, someone writes, the Hindus never invented the series. Okay? Some Western scholar works with the local scholars, translates, and then presents a paper. Okay? He is called Vish. Now, when he submits the paper, it goes to a higher authority, and then he writes back. So that is what it is. 
The Hindus never invented the series, it was communicated with many others by Europeans to some learned natives in modern times. Mr. Rish sent list of various methods of demonstrating the ratio of diameter to the circumference of a circle employed by the Hindus, being impressed with the notion that they were the inventors. <coughs> I requested him to make further inquiries and his reply was that he had reasons to believe them entirely modern and derived from Europeans, observing that not one of those who used the rules could demonstrate them. Indeed, the pretensions of Hindus to such knowledge of geometry is too ridiculous to deserve refutation. See the kind of phrase and language that has been employed. So this is the kind of prejudice that these people were maintaining. In fact, which had no reasons to believe. He just puts the word upon his mouth and that is why history does not present and the reason for quoting this was, see, I said initially, So we have not been investigating whatever that has been presented, we just imbibe and we felt that that is the way to go. So we have to change. <laughs> so this path is not easy. Okay. Whichever path you want to choose, if you want to be achiever, there will be various obstacles on the way and you have to go through and it is in facing these obstacles and still achieving, you will feel that you have lived a purposeful life. Okay. This is what is meant by you have to become okay, and not merely simply acquire something. So effort should be made to highlight important discoveries made in India as a part of school and college curriculum. And since school has not been serving the purpose, so these organizations like GOD have been doing this. I'm so happy. So, and uh, history has taught in school today is hardly useful. And uh, it is something that has been given by others to us. And it is not presented in the rightful manner. I gave you some examples for that. And it has to be made accurate and attractive. Both are important. And this is the final slide. Many of you would have heard the name Raman, C.V. Raman. Huh? What has he done? The most important thing which gave him the Nobel Prize. Raman effect. Very good. So Raman effect. So this Raman actually comes up with this statement. See, he says, we have, I think, developed an inferiority complex. I think what is needed in India is the destruction of this defeatist spirit. We need a spirit of victory, a spirit that will carry us to our rightful place under the sun, the spirit which recognizes as inheritors of a proud civilization. See, this is something which has to be inculcated. And uh, if we do so, nothing can hold us back. And this is what I think even our uh, Prime Minister has been repeatedly saying. So this is fortunately, we are blessed with a certain ambience even in the political sphere that we will be able to achieve something, what we deserve. And uh, since this year being Aravind those thing, he also makes a very interesting thing. He was one of the phenomenal scholars so somewhere he says, break the mold to the past, but keep safe its genius and its spirit or else you have no future. Okay. So this is something which we have to understand. This uh, leaving out something and then embracing something is not new to us. Even Kalidasa says, Purana Mithyeva Nasasu Sarvam Nachapi Kavyam Navamitya Vidyam Santas Parikshya Anyatara Bhajante Mudha Parapratya Neya Buddhi. This Parapratya Neya Buddhi is what we have been all this time. So we have to just leave that. Then I think we will have real glorious past. And a glorious future. Have any questions? Please put your hand up. A mic will come to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
no one? Someone should start their cell phone. Yes, please. Shantan. <laughs> Uh, no, Shikhar, and thank you for such a rock star talk. Uh, so I was wondering when you were telling that a lot of these concepts, uh, mathematical concepts, a lot of these formulas were presented in the form of uh, mantras, shlokas, and I'm sure they must be dated way back. And when someone like a Newton or Fibonacci uh, reinvented them, or the way we know it, did the went study in Indian scriptures or translations, or can we attribute they, maybe it also occurred to them? Yeah. So, yeah. Very good. So, uh, I would say yes and no to this. One will not be able to tell with any degree of confidence that they studied this unless we are able to trace the path through which it went. Certain things we know that it travels through Arabia and then it went there. So some of these things are quite evident. When it comes to this Gregory Leibniz Newton which you are referring to, there has been a hypothesis which has been made by someone that this calculus also went through Portuguese but we do not have any concrete evidence to do this to prove this till now. Independent discoveries have always happened, which we all know. And uh, my guess is, as far as these concepts are concerned, they are independent because when you study the work of Grigory and Leibniz, they have chosen a completely different path to arrive at that. Totally different. So there are several advantages in learning. So whatever we have learned in school, I can tell you with conviction that learning by the methods which have been advocated by our own mathematicians has plenty of advantages. So many people develop phobia towards mathematics because it is not taught in a way which is cherished by the students. So here we have found and it is one of the most ancient civilizations has found a way by which it can be communicated with not only rigor but also beauty and charm. So if we can convey there is a plenty of simplicity in this. It has enormous pedagogical value. So this is something which we need to understand and appreciate. Thank you. <laughs> Ram Ram. Namakita Pushpagai Mana in the Kate, a Brahmastra in the Kate, Ariela and the Ayinachi, Aripla number, Adachi Namla like Putremo Madamiria, Namaya Rafael Vedil in Wanga Vidik, Cryogenic Engineer Russia in Wanga Vidik. Okay. This Pushpaka Vimana is something which has quite intrigued me. Our Tamil Agar Tamil is all wrong. Our Tamil Agar. Ipo, there are two ways. One is you have found a way by which you are able to transcend the time and space through certain powers which we do not know which can be explained by science. Right? So a teacher is able to read the mind of the other person. We have no clues how we do this. Similarly, certain things which we find in Puranas, we cannot rule out that they are not correct. It is only fancy imagination. There is no reason to do that. But with the current tools, we are not able to explain that. This is also a fact. 
So there might have been certain things which are beyond our capacity to understand and explain. So the tradition has been lost. I am telling you one simple example I tell you. In 1992, I went to IIT Bombay for a workshop or a conference which was five days long. So there was a person who was demonstrating how I can extract your tooth without you feeling a pinch of pain by holding some noddies here. So I went and sat just to experiment myself. And this was true. Now even today, in Kalari Pai 2, there are people who practice certain things where they show. So how I can make you open your finger and so on, this is much simpler. So there are certain techniques which have been experimented by people for several years. And the sastra, etc., which we are talking of, cannot be simply ruled out because there are certain things which we just press some button, something happens. But ultimately, some signal passes from somewhere and then triggers something, right? So therefore, if certain traditions are lost, it is lost once and for all. It is extremely difficult for us to regain. So that is all I will say. So it is up to us to see that both traditional practices as well as knowledge that has been preserved till date in some form should definitely continue. And that is, I think, very important. Some of these people are trying to work towards that completely. Thank you. Namaste. and whatever in school and I, I might never even get to use it, right? I think I think your session answered that <laughs> to the team. Thank you so much for that. I request uh, Brahma Shri Balaji Sharma to honor Shri Mulevasu Krishnamurti Jastigar before coming on stage to honor sir. Young friends here who may not be personally aware of uh, most respected uh, Shastrigar. He is Maho uh, Maho uh, which uh, would simply translate to good in simple terms of the highest honors a scholar can get uh, for his uh, knowledge and expertise in Indian scriptures. He today is a living monument. He is one of the highest qualified people in India in Shastras. Uh, he was honored by the President of India and uh, he was formerly Principal of the Madras Sanskrit College and uh, um, I can just go on and on and on with, with this list. Most people, most uh, young people today who have been inspired to study uh, Sanskrit and scriptures have been touched by him, inspired by him. So he's such a great living soul amidst us and he enjoys a very special place in the heart of our Guru Maharaj, His Holiness Maharaj Sri Sri Mujitra Swamiji. It's an absolute honor to have him and uh, also Mami here. Uh, they are such an exemplary couple for all of us to follow. And of course, our uh, beloved doctor here, uh, Sir's son. So no wonder, it's like a tiger would only beget a tiger. So <laughs> that's, that's really what we saw just now. Thank you. It's such an honor to have all of you here today. Namaskar.
Our next speaker for the day is Sri Shantanu Gupta. He's a well-known public figure and don several hats. He's founder and CEO of the Ramayana School, an online platform focusing on learning life skills that has had a reach of over 3,000 participants from 22 different countries. He's also a published author with renowned publications like Sage, Bloomsbury, etc., a TEDx speaker and a political analyst. He's the biographer of Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Sri Yogi Adityanath with his book titled The Monk Who Became Chief Minister and is featured in the list of most memorable non fiction books of 2017 by Amazon India. Sri Shantanu wrote a sequel to this book titled The Monk Who Transferred Uttar Pradesh. Another book of his, BJP Past, Present, and Future, is now available in four Indian languages. Shantanu Ji has an engineering degree from G.B. Pant University management education from XLRI Jamshedpur and did his masters in policy and politics from Institute of Development Studies, University of Sussex in the UK. He has worked for a decade as a process and management consultant in many cities in India, Switzerland, Cyprus, Hungary and Israel and has represented India in many international conferences on economy and policy. He has been kind enough to associate with us, Global Organization for Divinity India Trust, by working with our Gopakutiram Heritage School teachers and training them in various aspects of teaching through Puranas. We welcome you, sir, to address the gathering. Come on, come on. I think after such a lovely, uh, if I can call the, I can call it a rock star talk by Dr. Subramanian, it will be very difficult to follow, but I'll try. So I'll try to play a video. Uh, if you can play that video before I start. Go on, Shantanu, yes, please, Shantanu. Opening up, go on, Shantanu. Shantanu, I just want to ask you uh, to go back to the, the original point about appeasement. Do you उनके नेतृत्व में एक बहुत बड़ी टीम हमने इस काम के लिए लगा रखी है और ये जवान लड़का करीब 40-50 लाख की नौकरी छोड़ के आया है और शांतनु गुप्ता हमारे साथ है पंडितकल एनलिस्ट है किताब उन्होंने लिखी उत्तर प्रदेश विकास की प्रतीक्षा में उसके लेखक है स्वागत है पंडित जी आपको India is changing very rapidly, with your ideas or without your ideas. Now we have to decide, do we have within us the perseverance, the courage and the intellect to move these levers, to enter into politics and to enter into parliament, which is currently not too welcoming for the youth. Why, why I want to show you. Hi, hello. Hi. So, yeah. So, why I wanted to show this, this is what I do today. And I'm not a journalist by training. In fact, I remember uh, I was in college in Pandagar. In third year, there was a, some, some star of the college competition. There was an aptitude test. So, till the time it was written, I was excelling. Right? And as soon as it came to any oral verbal thing, I was on the stage for, for the final round. And for the for the whole one hour, I did not speak. I was numb, right? And today, I talk almost three hours with Arna Goswamis of the world, right? So how this happened, that journey, I'll try to tell you. Uh, from someone who got numb uh, when I was 20, and someone who has done almost 5,000 debates in the last five years on, on TV channels. Uh, so this is how the journey started. I went to Kendra uh, uh, in a city called Rishikesh. Where is Rishikesh? Uttarakhand. Uttarakhand, yeah. When I was I, I was studying, it was part of Uttar Pradesh. You know, which year got divided? I'll keep doing this quizzing, that's my habit, so that you are alert. Which year Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh got divided? Say something. <laughs> right? Like, see, 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 I, I help a lot of people to help in the exam. When they at least say something, right? But year 2000. 
So yeah, so uh, I went to this school and my fees was 35 rupees a month. And yeah, I had hair then. <laughs> and I went to a college called G.B. Pant uh, University. Uh, you must have heard the name of Govind Vallabh Pantji, right? It was named after, it's a very famous agriculture university. They have patents of a lot of re uh, weeds and rice that we. So I did my engineering there, spent a lot of time because my English was not good and English was like a thing that you should know. So if you see that, that Chambers dictionary, that was quite a fat dictionary which I used to refer every now and then. I used to spend countless hours in a uh, uh, library, right? And then these are the career options I choose for the next 20 years, right? And it was quite fun for me to make this slide because uh, because last five, six years, I'm not even working for someone. So I never made my CV. So this was that gave me the opportunity to almost make my CV after after many, many years. So this is the logo of GB Pant University. I went there. Uh, then I did a, a course in uh, CDAC, Diploma in Advanced Computing. Then I worked in, for a company called Intergraph. It was a company in Hyderabad, which was working for uh, making software for GIS and satellites. That was my first job uh, in my life. Then I moved to Mohali, a company called Quark, and a lot of people you might be knowing uh, the newspapers and magazines that we get every day. They are made in a software called Quark Express, right? And Adobe, there's the two softwares. Then I went to school again. I went to XLI Jamshedpur, spent some time there. Then I came back, uh, worked in Pune. There's a company called Geometric Software, which has a partner with a company called Dust Hall System. Uh, you must be hearing about Raphael, right? Raphael is made by a company called uh, the Sol System in Pune. What did you do? I did my ma management there, yeah. yeah. Then then I came to Bangalore. Uh, I worked for Mercedes Benz. The name of the company was Daimler Chrysler. Though I never owned a Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then I went to Europe. Uh, and worked for an Israeli company, Amdocs in Cyprus. You know there's a country called Cyprus? What is the capital of Cyprus? I didn't know uh, before I went there. It's called Nicosia. Uh, then I came to Bangalore again, worked for a company called Vipro. Then, I, then after all of this, I thought, okay, enough of this. Let's study political science. So I went to UK, uh, did my master's in political science and policy from University of Sussex. And I started working for non-profits. I started working for a large foundation called Nandi Foundation. Uh, Hyderabad. Then Nandi sent me to Mumbai, Nandi sent me to Delhi, I kept, kept. And then I had this romanticism to work in the rural heartland of India. So I went to UNICEF and they placed me in a district called Lalitpur in Uttar Pradesh. Right? It's one of the remotest districts uh, uh, in India. Yeah, from there, I spent around two years there in rural heartland. An amazing experience was living in rural. I don't know how many of you lived in rural India. Like being for two, three days and living, as I'll tell you, the interesting examples, right? By the time, uh, the year was around 2012, right? And we, the urban people, me and why were urban habits, right? So we went on, out for cornflakes. There was no cornflakes in the whole of Lalitpur, right? We went to ask for maybe brown bread. There was no brown bread in the whole of Lalitpur. Then whenever we used to, uh, to go to Delhi or Bhopal or Jhansi, people used to buy clothes, we used to buy groceries. So that when we come back, to, we have our, our, our kind of food. Then I started working for the Think Tank, Center for Civil Society. And then I started my own foundation. After that, started left the formal job, started uh, writing, right, and shouting on TV channels. <laughs> so why I'm telling you all of this? So if you classify all of this, right? If you classify all of this, this is kind of a technology IT kind of jobs, which I did for almost five years of my career. These are the management consulting kind of jobs, which I again did for five years of my career. And then these are social sector jobs, and then you know five years of my career, right? And then for the last five years, I'm writing, right? And this was in UP Uttarakhand, this was in Hyderabad, this was in Hyderabad, this was in Mohali, this was in Jamshedpur, Pune, Bangalore, Cyprus. Yeah, so Vipro sent me to Switzerland, so I lived in Switzerland uh, for a year and realized that Shah Rukh Khan is more famous than any of the local stars there. <laughs> because of him, it, it became a movie destination. Uh, uh, then went to Sussex, UK, came back to Hyderabad, Lalitpur, Delhi, right? So out of all of this, 
right? And when I drew this slide, I was able to make a couple of patterns. What are the patterns you can make, right? If you call me, I'm successful. What are those attributes? What do you build? Just shout out without raising your hands. What is happening here in this phenomenon? Just, just object, objectively study it. Don't think that I am standing here. You can criticize it. You can praise me. That's fine. But what's happening here? Which I also realized when I, when I drew this. There are two, three phenomena which are happening. Anyone? Yeah, so that's one that, uh, that I move to a lot of places. And this advice I give you, at least if not outside India, India is such a vast country. Uh, travel and work in other city, wantedly. Ask your company to shift to another, another location of that, that, that company. I'll give you a very interesting example. So because of Prime Minister Narin Modi's push, TCS started an office three years back in uh, Banaras. TCS are offered in Lucknow, which is a 4,000 4, seater office. But they started in Banaras. So Banaras is now a very developed city, but not a typical IT city, right? Uh, and they have an 800-seater office there. And I realized a lot of people from Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, South Indians moved there, right? When the option was given to them. And they have taken the house next to the uh, uh, temple, right? Baba Vishnu temple. And now, from last four years, there is like a very proper way to go inside the temple. They can make a pass. They got a yearly pass there, right? So that's a new kind of incentive, right? People are moving from IT cities from Bangalore to Hyderabad to Pune to Kashi and uh, having an IT salary and able to live in Kashi. Right? So one is there, as you said, move to a lot of cities, right? Which helped me to know a lot of cultural nuances, a lot of historical nuances, right? And still uh, the day I travel. W what else is happening? What else is happening? And I think someone mentioned that, I think you, someone mentioned, I've tried to be a student all along. So this I happened think. when I was 20, this happened when I was 25, and this happened when I was 30. Yeah. So when I was 30, I went formally to college, right? And though I, I'm not doing any study there, but again, uh, I, I feel that when I attended uh, a doctor's half session or any other yeah. session, I'm very attentive, take my notes. So that's a second learning that you can take it from me. Try, try to be a lifetime student, right? Everyone, and my son is with, uh, with me right now, from him to teachers like like Dr. Saab, I, I, I keep learning every day, right? Second thing, I think you must have realized these kind of things are very different, right? IT, management consulting, and no social sector job. And whenever you move from one kind of realm, it becomes quite unnerving, right? For, for at least the first one or two years, right? And normally in life, we don't want to come out of our comfort zones, right? Like, Whatever is going on, let it go on, right? Let me excel where I'm at. So second thing which I were able to break, maybe by coincidence then, or maybe by the bravado of youthfulness, but it happened that I was able to break the stereotypes and able to move out of my comfort zone. So I was an IT job, nicely in the corner, doing Win32 programming, right? All of a sudden, I'm, I'm pushed to a consulting job, where every day you have to talk to five people, you have to convince them or get convinced, right? So, so that's one, and when I was very comfortable there, getting a high salary in Switzerland, call, all of my relatives from India to Switzerland, when I was very comfortable there, then I moved out again, and, and started doing uh, uh, social, so, uh, social work in NGO, which is, a, which is a huge work. When Professor Saab was talking about variables, I keep saying this example, that when I moved from a tech job to a management job to a social sector job, uh, one thing I've realized, the number of variables that you control or where you work on keep increasing, right? I find an IT job is a very short equation, right? Like a small equation with one or two variables. You you go there with a with a card, you open the door, you, you get a nice laptop, a nice internet, someone, your boss will give you a, some code to program, you program, go back, on first salary will come, happy? And then buy your car, how CMI is, happy, right? When you're consulting, you have to do all of that work yourself. So you have to make sure the sales target of the companies are met. But when you work in social sector, oh my God, the variables are like infinite. There, there, there is there's poverty, there's caste, there's religion, there's country, there's international politics, who is which party is in power, what is the religion of the group I'm working with. Endless, right? I can like keep saying and the, the variables are endless. And then I realize that in social sector, in policy sector, in policy sector, you need the smartest of the people because the variables are more, right? And if the variables are more, you need even smarter people, even committed people to work there. What, so, what are variables? Unknown variables. Yeah, unknown variables. Unknown variables which, which you can't even predict. There's no pattern to any. Uh, in fact, there is one of my TED talks that how you can enter politics. And my answer is you don't know. Like, there's no pattern. There's no pattern. I 
describe couple of patterns, then you describe, but these patterns may not work for you, right? So Gadi is right. There are so many unknown variables. So why I'm telling you all of this? These, this is the pattern which worked for me. One is it kept on learning every five, ten years formally and informally even now. Kept on changing my place. Uh, kept on pushing because when you change your place also, you are pushing yourself out of the comfort zone. Even if you change a house within a city, right? You you for six months you are a little little uh, unnerved. Uh, so these are the three items which which uh, worked for me. Wait one, wait one. Right? Yeah, I just try to list out. So constantly come out of the comfort comfort zone, taking rest, uh, trying to be a student, kept my belief, uh, uh, astha, working hard, keeping good health. That's very important. A lot of people miss that out, keeping good health and make sure half an hour, one hour is dedicated to health. Whatever, you, you play sport, you do yoga, you do gym, whatever you do, but dedicated uh, time to keep your health. Because at times, I have realized in some moments in life that your, your mind is working, but your body is not supporting uh, uh, that pace, right? Uh, family support, that's very important, at least for me, because uh, my wife comes from Hyderabad and she is born and bottom in a very urban place. So I am from a like a semi-urban Rishikesh, Rampur kind of area. For her to live in Lalitpur, where you can't get what you want to eat. And I remember when I bought my air conditioner, right, the, 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 the guy came and he was wanting to say, sir, you, I can't fix it. Why? Because you, he said, you don't have three-phase electricity. I was like, oh, what's that? You have to check your electricity before installing an AC. And he said, sir, there's people outside and I saw everyone has an air cooler. Because it seems the electricity is not supporting a heavy machinery like this. Like air conditioner. So that's one year, one and a half year in the heavy uh, heat of uh, Bundelkhand uh, we lived in. <coughs> so yeah, so but but that that uh, made us learn a lot of things. Keep trying, coming out of the city and keep experimenting. So these are the ideas which which worked for me in choosing my career options, right? And then when I did all the jobs, I thought, okay, let's start writing, right? And I started with a uh, small. Uh, paper which publishes book, uh, Ideas in Education in India, uh, kept on giving all my work always to policy makers so that it can have a larger impact. Uh, this is the first political book that I've written, that how UP, uh, I wrote it in Hindi, and this is the first Hindi book for that publication. If you know the publication of Bloomsbury, which is Harry Potter, right? It was the first Hindi book, which they wrote originally in Hindi, it was not a translation. And then I moved on to write the most successful book of my career, uh, The Monk Who Became Chief Minister. And after this, people started calling me author, right? So I've written a couple of books before that. Uh, because I think the book became uh, quite successful. And the subject of the book was already successful. Uh, and it got translated into multiple languages. In fact, this picture is the older picture. Now it's in almost 12 languages. And I've written a sequel to that, The Monk Who Transformed Uttar Pradesh. And in fact, I'm talking in Chennai Mission today at 4 o'clock. If you're around, you can come. Uh, it, 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 it got in Marathi. This made me travel to almost all parts of India, many parts of the world, many universities called me. This book is available in Harvard's library, in Indian parliament, in UK parliament, in American parliament. Uh, so why am why I'm telling you all of this? Someone who did engineering degree and management degree was in social sector started writing book. Meaning any, technically anybody can do anything if you just exert and put your uh, thoughts together. This book of mine, the Bharatiya Janata Party, Past, Present, Future, became number one rank in Amazon. Uh, like when I was traveling to airport, I saw, wow, it's a number one book in the airport category, and a lot of people greeted me in the airport. Someone, it became a curriculum. A lot of universities started with Indonesia Islamic University. I go there and teach now. Uh, yeah. Then that took me to a lot of literature festivals, right? So though uh, uh, I've realized monetarily, uh, I must be the very few people who have declined monetarily in life, like when, what I used to earn <laughs> maybe 10 years back, I earn, earn less. But I realized there's something called a social capital, right? Uh, I'm standing here, yesterday I was meeting Annamalai ji, tomorrow I'm meeting maybe Guru Murthy ji. This was not possible, I mean, can't even think of 10 years back, right? Coding nicely in one corner and making the software products for some company, right? So uh, at times you have to do this adjustment. So life gives you different kind of capital. Sometimes it can be real capital. Uh, uh, sometimes it can be social capital. And each has its own value. Uh, then yeah, that made me uh, land to TED Talks. And a lot of institutions which I never cracked their exams, 
I don't teach there, so that's, that's, that's one. <laughs> From IITs to IMs to a lot of ISBs, so I go there. A um, oh, lo lot of these anchors, which I am, because I'm almost 10, 15 years younger than them, I, I grew uh, watching them, and now they're all friends, and I do almost daily debates with them. So I think this journey from uh, a college in Pandagar to writing books to TV, uh, this is how people see. It. But there is a lot of there is a huge path that I've travelled while while coming here, and which has a couple of elements which I try to uh, uh, list and again reiterate that try to take risk, right? Because it's fun first of all, right? You try new things, and I think my 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 uh, thumb rule is right just to think what worse can happen think this what reverse can happen you can anyway maybe a lot of people don't know i'll waste one year don't waste don't say waste one year you get a new experience in one year you'll come back in fact in this talk right i i did quite a havoc uh, in that talk it was in, in a decent management college called bimtech Berla management college in noida i was talking about entrepreneurship right uh, in an mba college and the faculty staff founders were sitting so uh, so one student asked what the best way to experiment with entrepreneurship so I asked him, what's your, what's your fees? He said, from 16, 17 lakhs. So I took the permission of the faculty. I'm saying, can I say what I'm going to say? You may not like it. He said, no, 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 go ahead. I'm saying, instead of studying uh, with 17 lakhs here, why don't you leave this and try a, try even a shop too? And you will learn everything. Resourcing, financing, HR, you learn everything. So just take this money and do something. Studying in one year, this faculty in college may not help much. So I'm saying, what I'm trying to convey, try to take risk. Maximum you learn some experience and you come back to what we're doing a year back or two years back. In fact, now there are a lot of organizations which are organizing a gap year concept. Like right? a gap year and do multiple things in that gap year. Maybe do music, maybe spend some time with sir and see what Indian scriptures are telling. Maybe learn Sanskrit, learn music, travel in India. So gap year is a very interesting concept. Maybe even take gap year during schools also. Uh, and I'll tell you one about one experiment that I'm doing still. So out of all of this, I think what worked for me is keep experimenting and enjoy those experiments. Don't say, Are, why I did this, oh my god, my salary is reduced. So I think just enjoy those experiments. And the biggest experiment I'm doing is this, which is homeschooling my son. Avram, can you stand up just for a while? <laughs> so, he's, my, he's my son, he's nine years. Yeah, he's six. Uh, I am now experimenting with him, he has never been to a school um, and he travels with me wherever I travel. At times he gets bored with such conferences, today is a, I think is a rather interesting one but at times they are boring ones also. Uh, but again when he gets time to uh, visit cities, places, he must have been to 15-20 states of India, uh, lived there, travelled there, right. And this experiment, you know, yesterday, 2-3 two, two, days back, a lot of people call me if they want to home school to, to take guidance. Uh, she says, okay, uh, so so I'm trying to take my son out of school, he's, he's 13, and what if he wants to go to school after a while? My answer is, okay, send him to school. I explained after six months, if you realize you want to go to school, send him to school. But what did happen in those six months? I don't know, we are not in some time range that if you waste, I say, what will the six months wasted? I'm saying, not six months, not wasted. I'm saying, you will do something, you learn something, and we are not in some time range that if you enter a a uh, uh, working job in the age of 22 is, instead of 21, as if the word heavens will fall, right? Nothing will not happen. So I think this time race, if, if you can cool down a little bit, that will help you to keep experimenting, as it helped me at least. Yeah, uh, okay. So with this uh, homeschooling, a uh, couple of years back, Abhiram came. Abhiram goes to Chinmaya Mission for the last four years. I think one day he came. I think it was a Balakanda uh, transaction that day. And Parshuramji came, if you remember, when uh, Ramji broke the Dhanush uh, to get married to Mata Sita in the Swamber, Parshuramji came and said, who dare to bring the, the bow of Shiva, right? And Abhiram asked a very interesting question, that Parshuram is the avatar of Vishnuji, and Ramji also avatar of Vishnuji, right? How can two avatars exist at the same time? Because his idea was a linear, like right? one avatar goes, another avatar comes back, right? So I didn't have an answer, I gave some gold gold answer to him just to satisfy that time, right? And, but that, that, kept a query in me, right, that okay, that's a, that's a smart question. And I started asking a lot of saints, scholars, whoever meeting. And but that is the time when I was writing my book on Yogi Ethanath. And if you know geographical location of Gorakhpur, it's four hours from Lucknow, and between comes Ayodhya. Ayodhya is just two hours from uh, Lucknow. It's a very good road. I thought, let me do some UP tourism marketing also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Uh, and in fact, now uh, international airport will come. The first terminal will be on uh, by uh, 2023. And this is a very nice name, Malayana Pushtutam Sri Ram International Airport. Uh, so, uh, uh, so I was uh, traveling there, and I got some amazing nuggets from the saints and seers and scholars and Ayodhya and some modern scholars of uh, Ramayana. And based on that, three years back, I formed something of the Ramayana School. And in the bio, as someone read, that I have almost, not not 3,000, almost 10,000 kids formally online or offline, leadership lessons from Ramayana. What I did, I broke the whole Ramayana story into 25 conversations that are happening between any character, between Ram and Sita, Ram and Dasar, Dasar and Lakshman, Ram and Lakshman. A lot of conversations happening, right? I, I, I stopped there and tried to communicate a idea which is very relevant in uh, today's time. And if you read Ramayana with every time with a different lens, you get a different learning from Ramayana. Abhiram was reading, I think you're reading Ayodhya Khan, right? Uh, of Amar Chitra Ayodhya Khan, he was showing a, a very interesting page where the animals that Rama found from the way from uh, Ayodhya to Dhanushkodi, what the animals he found. And a lot of people did the flora and fauna study that 80 to 90 percent animal in those beds is still the same. And that is one of the other way to prove that Ramayana really happened. It's not Valmiki ji one day wrote some fiction novel, uh, right? So that's a very interesting study. So I have seen people have tells Ramayana is a very, very different angle. Someone like Dr. Nilay Shob or, or uh, Dr. Hema and Hari, they have done a very interesting dating of Ramayana. And the dating of Ramayana is hidden within, within Ramayana, or the, with, the, with the mention of nakshatras there, right? So, so uh, I think this has been a very interesting journey from last two and a half years. And this made me travel to a lot of other places. So I think idea is keep experimenting, keep learning new things and with Abhiram's experiment uh, and Nakshatra, uh, my daughter who is only three years, uh, we are experimenting and we are learning more, right? Because in the process of not teaching them, learning with them, we are again back to the back to the books, back to the drawing board and learning a lot of things together. In fact, uh, with this I went, uh, I think two three days back, me and Abhiram have a longish conversation that started out of nowhere. We are standing in the balcony, we live in an apartment which is 22 floors high and we live in uh, seventh floor. I think he just asked how many people are living here because we moved a little recently here. Uh, I said, I don't know, maybe let's calculate. So from a MyGate app, the entry app, he said, no, there are 2,800 uh, houses. On an average, there are X number of people in a house and we multiply and there, there we calculate there are 10,000. Uh, people might be living in the apartment, right? And all of a sudden I realized we have already in those 20-30 minutes, we have discussed a lot of concepts that how you can guesstimate. Guesstimation is an amazing art that if I am sitting here, I say, what is the cost of this all? I keep asking these weird questions. Because I remember someone asked me a question when I was in class, what is the volume of this room? I said, volume? I don't know. Volume? Like that you calculate on a paper. How you calculate a volume of a room? Then I realized, oh my, you can calculate a volume. Like, and it was a very square, like a, a cube kind of room. Uh, so, and then we did a huge guesstimate and then he asked the question, oh my god, it must be very expensive to build. So how he got the, the builder, got a money, after saying you guess, he said, oh, he might be very rich, may not be. Then for the next half an hour, we discussed the concept of loan, that how we can take loan and mortgage and EMIs, that we discussed for half an hour. Then he, then I told that he might have sold without even making it, right? The flats are being sold without even making it, right? And then we discussed that he asked me how you can sell something which is not even existing. Then I discussed the idea of selling a promise, which is like a very interesting uh, financial instrument, right? Like the futures trading, uh, right? So we did not discuss future trading, that's quite complex. But yeah, that a promise can also be sold, but that promise then has to be bound to a legal structure. What if, then he asked, what if the builder doesn't give me the house? Then he said, okay, there is a contract. Then we discuss contract. Then we realized that like in a in an almost one hour, who are conversation sitting on a balcony, uh, we discussed a lot of concepts, right? Which were not started that today we will learn math or today we will learn future trading, right? Uh, and that's how it's been happening with Abhiram. And now I think we're trying to document a lot of these conversations, uh, which uh, one day started on a dinner table, then we realized that the rice that we're eating, how it might have come to our plate, right? From the coke to the shop to the trader to the grower to the whatever, whatever, whatever. And then there are five items on the plate, right? And the plate itself is made of steam. Then how it traveled to our, then itself is a science in itself. So I'm saying, if you just walk through your life, right, then you realize that there's a lot of learning in it if you just have a questioning mind. Uh, and career-wise, if you're ready to like this. And that, uh, at least being successful, uh, I'm being happy and successful doing that. 
and even if I'm successful, I'm enjoying doing that mm-hmm. and feel myself as a far more contented and a better human being in the process. Yeah, this I want to share. Thank you. It's cheaper to study in Russia than in China. Okay, so? And uh, we promise, I think uh, we have a very good government now. We, pro- we also promise that it will be stopped. So studying in India will be made cheaper. Maybe by giving a free land to the university or huh. a tax holiday or whatever. Okay. It must be done. Because promise also. Why is it not done? Why is it still costly to study in India? Okay, you're saying why study, uh, though, uh, okay. Maybe I not, may not be competent to answer exactly what you are asking. I think what you are trying to ask, why it's, it's costly to study in India than in maybe uh, somewhere outside like Russia. Though it may not be necessarily to in all the courses. Yeah, let's say studying engineering is quite cheap in India, best of the best. Quite uh, Studying management is quite cheaper in India, best of the best institution. Though I think we have not stayed out to figure out how to come on that ranking. It's not that we are not there. Only thing we have to figure out what all to do to get into the ranking. I realize those rankings, they are set. See, all rankings are a function of some parameters, right? If you master those parameters, you will come into the rankings, right? So, yeah, in medical, might be that might be the case. If you not land up into a government college, it might be cheaper. But yeah, so you are not competent exactly that why medical education is cost there in India. Apologies. Anyone else? Anyone else from the students? Students are a little silent. And they are the only one who are wearing mask. <laughs> Maybe to hide their expressions. This is mask is quite a utility, <laughs> like apart from what they're meant for. <laughs> Use it for everything else. Okay. Okay, so you are asking. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. There's a mic for you. I'm sorry, sir. You said yourself? that in government college. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Can you introduce yourself? Myself, I'm Shama. I'm from Sussex One Kalala Senior Secondary School. Yeah. I'm studying 10th. Uh, you said that in government schools it costs less, but it actually costs more than lakhs. Okay, it must be. It might be. I'm saying in engineering college versus uh, outside India. Say, versus outside India. I think the gentleman asked that it's it's uh, it's costlier to study in India than outside. So that I'll answer that at least in engineering and management multiple courses is far more cheaper. Not even one fourth of the cost. Because I did my master's uh, outside, but in medical it might be the case that in some colleges it might be possible. Yeah. Okay, yeah, can you pass on the mic to her? Hello sir, I am Dhanlakshmi of Sri Shankara Vidyalaya. Do you think home education will suit every nook and corners of India? Yeah, I think that lot of people are, is home education for everyone. So I think, uh, in fact, uh, I may want you to check my TED talk, which I just shown on home, like why homeschooling for me. It's my personal choice, not my family's personal choice. There was something which I thought is not available in school. Because if I send my son to school, he has to study those five subjects, which someone else has decided that you have to study math, science, English, or whichever state you are living, some one language, two language, that's all right. We can keep fighting on one language, two language, three language formula, but that's all, those five, four or five subjects, music, uh, arts, culture will be still be extracurricular, done on a Saturday, we skip most of the time, hardly no teacher, right? So I'm saying, uh, in my talk also say, if you tell Lata Mangeshkar that uh, music is extracurricular, she will slap you out. Right? If you say Sachin Tendulkar that cricket is extracurricular, he will slap you out, right? So why can't they can be curricular for someone, right? So I think that's my idea, but again, if, if you're happy with school, I, I have no grudges against school, school, like I've been to school, but again, uh, to my understanding, if you can't pick choose in colleges, at least that liberty is there. You can do a lot of pick and choosing, right? And that's why that's the element of foreign education I still love, right? You can do a lot of pick choosing. You can make your own uh, a la carte what you want to eat, right? The schools that facility is available in 11, 12, but that too very limited. That too very limited, right? If schools also you can choose a lot of stuff, uh, I think I'll be happy with schools. Uh, yeah, but again, yeah, for educating lot of people together, maybe a structured form like school, but with new elements of choosing uh, what you want to do, I think might help. That's my idea. Thank you. This is very uh, amazing to, uh, you know, uh, to know about the journey that you've 
been crossed through and all that. And what I like about is you said that even if you're not getting back, you can come back and you say that you have a learning experience. But what I'm trying to infer and what I infer and what I'm trying to say here is you just very casually said that you come back again and you learn. But this kind of attitude, it, I feel at this point of junction with all the students. Maybe not, right? So I'm saying we too overloaded this word failure. I just call it experiment. Some experiments work, some experiments don't. And in the process, you learn a lot of things, right? I keep hearing, I know who said someone, I think Edison said that maybe he made the, the final combination of the gas and the filament in the 800 combination. And he said, I don't know 800, I know 800 ways by which bulk cannot be made, right? So that's also one way of thinking. Uh, or that 3M sticky note, it seemed they wanted to make the strongest glue and they end up making the weakest glue, but it became the 3M sticky notes, right? So there are a lot of examples, so that's something, failure is really not failure, as and we stigmatize it. Uh, that's one. Coming to institutions, I think, yeah, in, during Corona, this thing is proven that school and a physical structure is not the only place to learn, right? It is still one of the prominent places to learn, that's not the only place to learn, and there are other ways to keep learning. But again, there are there can be merits and demerits, and debate can go on. Uh, maybe for social camaraderie, learning together. There are a lot of ways that why people come together in society uh, and do some things. But yeah, but that that myth that a teacher, a classroom, a curriculum is the only way to learn. That that myth is, I think, a lot of people already knew it. But again, this this Corona uh, broke it even uh, even brutally. That there are other ways to learn, even better ways to learn. Yeah, but again, schools have their own significance. So, myself, uh, Prithek, and I'm from SSGA KKL. And I'd like to ask a question. So, what made you leave a tech job and move to a social service? So, on the, on the high side, I can think, I can just tell you the incident that when it happened, I was in Zurich working for a bank called Credit Swiss. In fact, I keep joking my friends that I had a Swiss bank account. It was a salary account. Though. Yeah, so, uh, in a meeting, uh, I think in 2007-8, there were like 8-9 people who were discussing a new financial instrument, right, which they were about to launch in the UK market. And, you know, in, in Zurich area, I was in Zurich, German is, is being spoken, that is the normal language. Though English was the official language of the office, but again, right, I think we, we all tend to have a habit of moving into our, our preferred language. So they were talking German, English, I knew some German then. So, and then they asked me, what's your view? And I was like, I said, I have no view, right, <laughs> I know. So I understood the topic and then I realized I think I don't belong here, right? Uh, earning a fat salary, earning a lot of money for the company and myself, is that what I want to do all my life, right? And as I told that, uh, I'm trying to solve a variable, uh, a equation which has certain variable, let's, can I not solve uh, another problem which has a lot of variables and search set, a lot of unknown variables, right? And I was doing a lot of social surveys, a lot of volunteering on the sides and at some point that sucked me and I realized that that has a, a better reception for me and I'll be uh, learning more. I think just went for my calling. Only thing uh, you have to, as she also said, uh, you have to somehow hedge the risk, right? That, okay, monetarily your lifestyle will not dwindle down. You will be, you will get some job finally. So if you hedge for the risk, I think experimenting is always fun. Okay. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Uh, I um, welcome Director Shantipani Gurukula Trust and Personal Secretary to Shri Sri Swamiji, Dr. Bhaginathan on stage to honor Shri Shantipani
Shri S. Jayakumar. He's an avid researcher in the fields of classical music and dance, South Indian history, and cultural history. He has professionally been associated with various institutions as a faculty, educator, and expert resource person for over a decade. He's a performing classical musician trained at Kalakshetra Foundation. Owing to his academic inclinations, he has presented talks and lecture demonstrations at various venues. Mr. Jayakumar holds a master's degree in music, another master's in history and heritage management, and one in Tamil literature. He additionally holds a diploma each in sound engineering and Saiva Siddhanta. He has been trained in epigraphy under the tutelage of Padma Bhushan Dr. R. Nagaswamy and Professor S. Ramachandran of the State Archaeological Department, Tamil Nadu. He has had the privilege of working with some of the finest performing artists and cultural organizations in the Indian subcontinent. Some of his notable works include Bombay Jayashree's musical drama, Tyagaraja, Mani Ratnam's current magnum opus, Ponyan Selvan, for which he is the research consultant, and go on. A firm believer that a greater understanding of our past will increase the chances of creating a better future, Sri Jayakumar is also the founder of a culture travel company, Courtyard Tours, an NGO of Prestara, and a traditional handloom revival venture, Tuhil. Uh, I welcome you on the stage, sir, to address the gathering. Thank you. A round of applause for you. to what to be done and what should I be pursued. So I have set up questions so that I thought I will keep it as interactive as possible. Are we all proud to be Indians? Yes. What are we proud of? Culture. Tradition. Heritage. Okay. Invitations. Inventions you mean. Inventions. What have we invented? We are all proud. We are all very proud. But what are we proud of? Do we know what we should be proud about? What are all the fields that India has contributed to the world? Do we know everything? Not everything. Do we know something? So you are all proud of what was happening 2000 years ago. Aren't you all proud of what's happening now? Something? Recent times? ISRO. ISRO. Very good. Anything else? Unity and diversity. Unity and diversity. Okay. Recent Commonwealth Games, Olympics, we should be. So, my point is, I interact with students on a daily basis and the last two years have been very difficult to get to the schools and interact with them. Under the NGO, my NGO Prastara, we try to make history and heritage as interesting as possible. How many all love history? Oh, interesting. Because most of the students when I interact with them, they, uh, how many all not like history so much? Boring. Why is it boring? Why is history bro boring? Remembering dates, that's the main concern. So when I teach history in schools, I ask the students to forget about those dates. Whether something happened in 694, 695 doesn't matter. As long as you remember what happened in that particular time period in that particular, uh, you know, region. Okay. How many all know about Brihadishwara Temple in Tanjau? Who built it? Raja. Raja. In which year that was built? Which was built? In? Thousand is nice. Thousand ten. Fantastic. Who built it? Raja. Raja. Did he build it? No. no. Who? Architect. Do we know the name of the architect? No. Someone from that side. Kunjara Mallan Raja Raja Perun Dachan was the chief architect of Tanjav Pradesh. Right? Yeah. So, what happened? There are three types of things that we are looking into. We are all proud to be Indians in Bharata Varsha. We are all blessed to have been born in this land and live and learn so much, which we are very proud of. We are proud 
without not knowing much. That's where I want to address. We should be proud. Whenever you go to Tanjavur Brindishwara Temple or even Mamallapuram, you will have someone guiding the tourists. You just observe those guides. Uh, they say, Idalam Pramadama Kati Kanunda. Ipudi Kati Nanan Yakumi Piriya. That's where the problem comes. Without even trying to explore uh, the knowledge system that we have, not we had, we still have. Because I'll tell you an example. Do you know the Sri Vimana of the Bhandarishwara temple? In common language, we call it as a Gopra. Technically, it is not a Gopra, it is a Vimana. Forget that. That's for some other day. Do you know it is completely hollow inside above the Shivalinga Brihadishwara? When well, few years ago, in Kanyakumari, we have a very tall sculpture of whom? You know who built it, designed it? Vidya Vachaspati, Sri V. Ganapati Stapati. Okay? The sculptors, the tradition of sculpting in this country, this unbroken tradition of that sculpting and designing and constructing, even today you have Stapatis building Hindu temples all over the world. Alright? Ganapati Stapati designed that particular Tiruvalluva statue, applying the same principles that Raja Raja Kunjara Perintachanno, Kunjara Malan Perintachan, the same principle he has applied to creating and designing and constructing that Tiruvalluva statue. So there is a knowledge system which we are not introduced to. Whenever you open your history books, you always come across many dynasties. When it comes to South India, especially the Pallava, Chalukya, Choda, few lines. That's all, right? So this is where I wanted to address because many years ago, when I was a student at Kalakshetra in 2003 or 4, during one of our annual music festivals, there was a person I just met in the canteen area. We were having some coffee and uh, some snacks. He asked me, where are you from? I said, I study music here and where do you belong? He said, I, I belong down south. He said, where? I said, near Chirambaram. I said, near Chirambaram where? I said, Sirgadi. He said, in Sirgadi where? I said, you wouldn't know my village. It's called Thiruvenkar, which is about 10 kilometers from Thiruvenkar. He said, yes, I know Thiruvenkar. Some of the finest Chola branches are from Thiruvenkar. That because he is a non-Indian. He is from Europe. I later learned that he is a scholar who has been working on South Indian culture, cultural history for the longest time. The things that I didn't know about my own village was told to me by a non-Indian. People have been coming here, learning things, writing wonderful uh, papers, studying ancient wisdom such as mathematics, astrology, astronomy, architecture, but we don't know. But we are proud of something. We are proud of something. Without knowing, we are proud. Uh, I, when I was introduced, uh, uh, he made a quote, usually I say, a country which doesn't remember its past has no future. That's where I believe it. A greater understanding of our past will enhance the chances of the better future. So it is our duty to not to discard our history, our heritage as something that is old and ancient without realizing that knowledge system is a continuous tradition. That's why I mentioned about the architecture and cultural uh, designs that still exist. People like Ganapati Stapati who has established, who was invited to the United States of America where he established a Vastu University. How many of you have uh, heard the word Vastu? What does it mean? Direction, sir. No. Vastu means design science. Today the architects use modern principles. In those days, we apply Vastu. Any temple we build in this country is based on Vastu principles, Agama Shastra and Shilpa Shastra. All right. These are all. Why I'm keeping, I keep talking about temples and these wonderful structures that we have because from there you can learn so much about history, our ancient past, and so much these temples and the historical structures that we have. And from 2022 to 2050, what are the things that we are going to be proud of? Because usually we don't ask ourselves this question. We are so proud of Ramayana, Mahabharata, our ancient scriptures, somebody said culture, university, unity, and diversity, and all that. Now what are we proud of? From, from today, 25 years later, what are we going to be proud of? That's where the question comes. In that sense, we are trying to interact with school students and college students 
try to get them the idea of the past. I'm not saying everything was glorious in the past because it's a, it's a complex. History is complex. Human history is very complex. Not everything can be seen through the 21st century lens, right? So the history of our country is not read in the way it should be read. We have not done that. Because we are losing the historical heritage on a daily basis. As I am speaking today, somewhere in the village down south, a temple pillar is being damaged by somebody. We are proud, but we don't respect. We are proud, but we don't know what we should be proud of. We are proud, but we don't know what we should be doing in the future. That's where your role comes in as a student, as a citizen of this country. Whenever we speak about uh, India, the idea of India, we are being told many different things. So what defines India according to you? Geographical location, tell me. Kanyakumari too? Kashmir. Kashmir. For how many years we have been this way? Too many centuries. How many centuries this idea of India existed? For me, now we are, you are thinking. All this while you have been thinking from 1947, August 15th. Now when I ask that question, you are all thinking, maybe I am not too sure. So when professor asked how many of you study Sanskrit in school, very few hands. How many of you study Tamil? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> how many of you have studied Purana Noor? How many of you have studied about a particular poem composed by Pari Kiraran Palyagasale Mudukudumi Peruvaldi? No, sir, that's not happening. That is not the Tamil I have learned. <laughs> Why? Suddenly, that's where the problem is. You know Purana Nuru. You study Tamil, a particular poetry which is part of 9th standard or 8th standard curriculum which I studied several years back. For the first time in Tamil literature, the idea of Bharat is defined. Do you know the first two lines of it defines India? Not today, 2100 years back. Vada adu pani padu varai vadakkum. When he praises Palyagasale, Mudugudumi Puruvaldi, the king who has conducted many yajnas and uh, yagas, that's why he is known as Palyagasale, Mudugudumi Puruvaldi. The poet defines India starting from the snow covered mountains till the ocean hit Kanyakumari. The idea of Bharat is several centuries old. In case someone tells you the idea of India is very new, tell them it is not true. You know Tanjavar Vrindishwara temple. Somebody said 1010 it was com completed and consecrated. Kumbhavishayam took place in 1010. Now we are in 1012 years, 1012 years old the temple is. 11th century, Rajarajeshwara, the temple was known as Rajaraja Choda, the emperor enabled that temple construction and he conducts the Kumbhavisheka. How many of you have visited the temple? Many of you might have not been able to go on the first floor of the Sri Vimana and then you have sculptures of Karanas mentioned in Natya Shastra by Bharata, right? In 11th century. How many of you have heard of Abhinava Gupta? No sir, not happening. Who is Abhinava Gupta? One of the greatest sons of Bharat, one of the greatest saints and scholars of Bharat, said to have lived in 11th century because few years ago we celebrated 1000 years of Abhinav Gupta who wrote the commentary for Natya Shastra. And he was living in North. Just to give you a connection, as he was sitting there in North India writing the commentary, assuming in Kashmir region, the Tamil sculptors Kunjanamalla Rajaraja Pirintacha was sculpting the Natya Shastra as in sculptural form in Tamil Nadu. You see the thread. That's where we want to make history and uh, heritage more interesting and things we should know to be proud of our own land. That's where the problem lies today. We are proud of the past, not very proud of the current, present. Are we? 
Why there is a silence? When I say 2000 years and 3000 years, you are all going. Are we proud of what we are doing here? Yes. In present day? Not really. On one hand, yes. We are, we are advancing in all the areas that we are in the race with the many developed countries. And with that, what happens is somewhere the notion of neglecting the past comes into our mind. Not conscious. Because this is what we see today. And uh, since I was, that was mentioned when they read about me working on Pony Vincent, we were trying to reimagine the ships of the Chola era. Do you know how many, how, many, how big the ancient ships were? Again, the marine archaeology or maritime history is something we are not taught in schools. Unless you choose to do a degree program in the maritime university or history of maritime technology in ancient India, we are not exposed to that. We were trying to reconstruct the Choda period ship and then we were going to prepare many texts. One such text was Yiptikal Pazaru. How many of you have heard about that? This is not for the scholars, students supposed to have authored by Boja, King Boja in the 11th century. There the description of ships that are there. My theory about that was very, rather for me it was fascinating because, because the region that the king was ruling was in Madhya Pradesh, central India. The coastal region was at least few hundred miles away. From where he gained that knowledge system, one theory is such he must have gained it from the south especially Tamil Nadu, since he had a political ally with Rajendra Choda, who is known for building a large navy when he was invading the Southeast Asian country. Knowledge system, again, shipbuilding. Astronomy, for sailing the ships, you should know about the position of the stars, so and so. All that were integral part of the knowledge system, indigenous systems. The problem, or we can address it, because when I was learning from Dr. Nagaswamy, one day he was talking about Silapadigaram, Arangetra Kadi, we were reading about Madhavi's Arangetra. He read the verse, asked me to read, closed the book, next day I went for the class, he said, what, is, what were the verses yesterday we discussed? Recite it. I opened the book. He said, why are you, he asked, why are you opening the book? Haven't you memorized those verses? I said, no sir. Will you do the same thing to your music guru who has just taught you a Muthuswami Dikshar Kriti or Tyagaraja Kriti? I said, no, I would have memorized it. But why aren't you memorizing this? Then it struck me the knowledge system we have had in this country, or we have in this country, have always been in memories. Also, we have written documents, enormous amount of written documents lying in many institutions across the country, waiting to be studied and researched. And we are actually don't have enough scholars or researchers in that sense. You know who was the first person to read those? How many of you know inscriptions? What are the inscriptions? Inscriptions are the Tamil is taken. Kalvet. Koila Kalvet to Pakara. Ilya? Yeah. Tanja or Koila Kalvet. More than 100 inscriptions are there. From where we get information about the Chora era, who built the temple, who designed it, how many people participated in the activity, who are all the employees of the temple. 400 women who were dancers, musicians, all the information is inscribed on the walls. The first person to read those inscriptions were a German scholar called Hulsch. Then it was published, Epigraphia Indica, South Indian inscriptions. After 1940s and 50s, such publications reduced significantly. Now we have to create a new set of scholars in terms of paleography, epigraphy, art historians, mu museum curators. There is Enormous potential, thankfully the current situation is so healthy, you, uh, you will be able to build certain institutions that can preserve the ancient knowledge systems that we always proud about, very less we know about. That's where the problem, that's where we need to address, not just my NGO, you all can form a group and then start identifying heritage, cultural history, monuments that need our attention knowledge systems that are to be documented and preserved for posterity because certain things are not preserved if it is not shared. You need to preserve them in, in order to share them. To share, preserve them, you need to share them. So that's where our problem is. The current generation is so much filled with data. 
so much of information is available to us very little knowledge information is different from knowledge that's where we lack we think googling and reading out of uh, wikipedia is a good thing it's a fantastic thing i think it's the easiest tool imagine the scholars who lived 100 years ago who had to walk and cycle take a public transport to go to these wonderful temples read the inscriptions identify them date them and publish them uh, have you heard of k nilakanta shastri k nilakanta shastri is just just one person student schools should be syllabus should be talking about such scholars if it wasn't for k nilakanta shastri we wouldn't have known about the cholas if it wasn't for dr c meenakshi the first women to do phd in history in india we wouldn't have known about the pallavas deva kunjari the pandyas sadashiva pandaratha raja manikanar there were so many scholars we should be thankful to them because the books are available today because they did the first level of work that is writing history from the primary sources but it is easier to teach history through these temples through these structures through these monuments if you want to call it that way it is easy but we are not using the efficient tools to teach history in schools that's why you are all bored of history because you always have to remember the dates okay and also the study about the temple agama shastra vastu shastra shilpa shastra the temples also have functioned as a socio cultural and economical center in ancient times near virupuram there is a place called tirumukkudal how many of you have been to the temple tirumukkudal perumal temple 12th century chola inscription perhaps the largest grantha inscription available to us in south speaks about the ayurvedic hospital that functioned next to the temple the medicines the physician the night watchman who collected the herbs to make the medicine all their names are inscribed 14 beds uh, you know the, even the person who brings the oil for the lamps to be lit at night his name is recorded the archaeological survey of india was so enthusiastic about that inscription and the temple they even tried to sort of plant some of these herbs in the garden area of the temple but we don't do where we should be studying like we study tamil uh, tamil la namba we call it as manapada say as long as we get five marks for that question that's enough sir why do i bother about what mr parikidar has to say about india how many of you have read the devar appar devar pasuram vaishnavite bhakti literature we should when we speak about tamil is such a rich language we don't read these things we don't we are not encouraged to read this some poem, poems are kept there is a beautiful devaram of appar it starts like dhavi mudal kaveri varai many of the commentators who wrote the meaning of the devaram said dhavi means kaveri is flowing in such a way many years later dr kuduvayil bala subramanian told me that dhavi is not kaveri the dhavi which is in jammu and kashmir so these things have to be told to us because once we lose that scholarship once we completely disconnect ourselves from that knowledge system we are absolutely we are aping somebody let it be west let it be somewhere in the east that's fine we are just aping we have not imbibed the good qualities from there the way they preserve the, the way they document the way they study the way they approach life itself these are all the career options thrown at you by today uh, by me today you can become art history we don't have art history we don't have we speak about ananda kumar swami we have naga swami we have dr chitra madhavan who is going to be next we have to create that interest inculcate that kind of a passion and also it can be really a well paying job to be to i will assure you because i quit other things i could have easily gotten into teaching i just took up you know doing a culture travel company to put together good cultural tools we lack people we do curated trails across south india based on architecture literature temple architecture iconography music and dance but we need people in that sphere as well we have so much to show in this country you are all proud of the our country but we don't know what we should be proud of we are not, we have to think of preserving documenting for for the future generations then we can say we are proud of the present day also thank you all so much
thank you so much, Shri S. Jayakumar. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from what he said is it's very important to understand uh, what we are proud of today, why we are proud of, and how are we going to be proud in the next 25 years, right? I think that's something that is a great take takeaway for all of us. Um, I request uh, Shri uh, Balaji Ramachandran, Trustee Jodi India, to come honor Shri Jayakumar. Our next speaker for the day is Srimati Janaki Sabesh. Um, she needs no introduction, I'm sure. Do any of you want to try to introduce her instead of me? You're all unusually quiet today. Is it because you're hungry or something else? Hungry? There's some tears, very healthy, tasty food waiting for you outside. You just have to bear it for another hour. <laughs> Applause, sure. <laughs> Shrimati Janaki Sabesh writes, performs, and lives through stories. Her distinctive and authentic style of blending narration, music, and movement is loved by children, youngsters, corporate professionals, teachers, and everyone alike. She has authored The Jungle Storytelling Festival, a picture book for children published by Tulika Books, and co-authored Parties Rasam with her daughter Dwani Sabesh and is published by Karadi Tapes. Wearing a variety of hats of an accomplished actor, voiceover, and theater artist, experienced marketer, facilitator, and the chief fun officer at her own storytelling initiative, Golpo Tales. She brings people together through intimate storytelling experiences around food, music, and nostalgia. She finds complete joy in transforming mindsets through storytelling. The stage is all yours, man. Amazing, huh? I was just like you when I was growing up. Wherever my parents took me, there was one Amar Chitra Katha. I grew many, many years back, you know. I was very small at that time. There was no tablet, there was no gadget, nothing. I just had books. So let me start with a story. This story is uh, set in Tamil Nadu in uh, one of the Gramaks. And uh, Parvati was a teacher. Parvati was getting married to Kamban from another village. So uh, Parvati was a school teacher. So everybody said, Parvati Amma ka Kalyanam, Parvati Amma ka Kalyanam. They didn't even go to school. They said, we all want to be a part of her Kalyanam. People started coming uh, and giving gifts. Lot of Urli, Valak, books. Lot of story books. And she was the daughter of a flower seller. So the whole house, Apolam Mandabangare, the Mazi AC Mandabangare, Aragana or Anglode, Vidla, Pajashami and Alam Pote, Pandalalam Kati. Everybody was ready. Tomorrow morning is the Kalyanam, and an old lady comes from a farm. Her name is Thai. Parvati, Parvati. All I have is a story and a song. Would you like to listen? Parvati was thrilled. 
She was a teacher. She loved telling stories and who doesn't like to hear a story? She forgot all about her kalyanam and she said, Thai, come. She went to the veranda and Thai started telling her the story. And as she told her the story, Bharati was completely shell-shocked. She just listened. And then she said, Thai, sing that song. And she sang the song as the notes went up and down, up and down. Parvati's eyes welled up and she was so, so happy. It was almost daybreak and Thai said, you are getting married today, go, go. But remember, you have to share the story and the song. They cannot be inside your, inside you for very long time. When you know a story, you have to share. Parvati said, of course, of course I will share the story. Of course I will share the song. In the next day, Kamban came from the next village. Parvati got married. And of course, Kamban also got a lot of gifts and all that happened. And they got married. And then Parvati and Kamban went off to the next village. Parvati joined a village school there, but Parvati was very, very interested in making sure her home was nicely decorated like any newly wed bride. She got an urli, she got a lamp, she got lots of things, she got a lot of books. But Kamban also got two gifts. He got a nice box, ornate, you know, with designs, and he got a betel nut crusher. Pak Katman. He loved his Vettala Sunnambar, so he decorated that box with Vettala Sunnambar and of course Pohyala Arati. We will not go into details. And he had this Vettala Nakrasha and they had a nice little swing. So he kept both of it and Parvati used to love cooking. She finished her cooking and then Kamban would sit and nicely have his Vettala. Days went past. She was so, so busy. She even started, she had a very good handwriting. Most women don't know. And he start, she started keeping accounts for Kamban. So Kamban came back and he'll say, accounts are ready? Yeah? And she'll say, yeah, yeah, ready. And they used to have a lot of discussions. Days went by. Completely forgot about the story in the song. I am a story I want to be told Before I grow very and old Kadai naan yennei sol I am a song I want to be sung while I am still lively and young. Padal naan yenni padinga yenni lamai ariyum unne padinga. They were very very angry. They are a story and a song. We want to scream and shout. We want to get out. So they decided that they will get out of Parvati's body. So one day she was frying chilies for Morada Puri, gunpowder. And Hachi, the story came out. Hachi, the song came out. Now when the spirits come out, they had to take shape of something materialistic. So they found the box. And they found the betel nut crusher. And off they went. They went off because they wanted to teach Parvati a lesson. Now what I didn't tell you before was in this village, when there were no electricity, when the lamps were, you know, completely dimmed, the flames used to fly to the temple. And there, the flames used to have a round table conference. Hey, Hey, Sue, I'll tell you what happened in my house. Hey, no, 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 I'll tell you. It's very interesting. So all the planes used to have a conference in the night after all the planes were put off. And also the men in the village, when they sulked, they also went only to the temple because there was no other place. So that day, when Kamban came back, he was already in a bad mood and he found both his precious items missing and he said, Parvati, where are these two precious gems of mine? And she said, where, where, what will I know? I, he said, you've been here at home. How can somebody take it right from under your nose? And he got so angry, he went off to sulk in the temple. And 
then when he was sulking in the temple, he heard sounds. He didn't know what happened. He shoosh, 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 shoosh. He peeped. It was all the flames. For a conference, this is what was happening. And suddenly, huffing and puffing, one flame came. And he said, you won't believe what happened in my house. Two spirits, one story and song, came out, they took the shape. Oh, you, you. This is my house story. Who is this? And then he listened to the foot story and he felt terrible. He went back running to Parvati and said, I beg your forgiveness. I know now what happened. I know where it went. Please, please share the story and the song. You think she was able to share the story? No. No? Are you sure? Yes. Hello, say yes, no? Yes. yes. He's already said one hour, so you have no other go. You have to be attentive, okay? Yeah? Right? Yes. No story, yes. no song. Then she said, okay, very tired, let's go to sleep. Meanwhile, the flames decided, this is not right. We have to convince the uh, story and the song to go back to Parvati's uh, body. And she has to, you know, be able to share. So they went, they went in search. Imagine the entire beautiful village. The flames were going, traveling from here to there, just like Diwali. It was like, you know, beautiful flames going. And finally, they found they emit so much of light, right? They could find them easily. And then they convinced, no, no, please go. Parvati did a mistake, please. And they went. So Parvati was very tired. Story went. Song went. And the next morning, when he asked, Parvati, can you try, try just this once? She opened her mouth. And there, there was the story. And then, there there was the song, the peacock, the milkman, the person who even delivered the newspapers, they all just kept aside whatever they were doing and they just listened to Parvati as her voice went up and down, just like Thai. And they were so, so thrilled. Kadai solunga, kadai kelunga, paattu paadunga, paattu kelunga. So, the moral of the story, I hate giving morals, but I would still, I mean, I, I do hate is a very strong word, I, I beg your pardon. I dislike because I feel children are really very, very, uh, they, they know the morals. If you have a story, and if you have a song, please share them. Please share them, otherwise, I don't know what shape it will take. <laughs> I came across this story in a book called Karadi Tales Story and Song, which I thank Karadi Tales for allowing me to perform uh, this story because it's so beautiful. And today I stand here, I mean, Doyle's, Shantanu Sir, Jai Kumar Sir, Professor Sir, you have all spoken about, I mean, you're all scholars. I have, I don't think I'm in any way, uh, you know, I can't even match those, and I'm not here to match, but. I would still like to share my story, which is, huh? <laughs> That's very kind of you, sir. My story is all about embracing a lot of things. So if somebody says, what do you do? I ask them, do you have five minutes? Because I do a lot of things. <laughs> and that doesn't come from somewhere where I say I'm an expert. I'm still learning. So do you know, uh, do you, you've all heard of this a phrase called jack of all trades yeah. yeah do you think that is do you know that when it actually came many centuries back it was called jack of all trades full stop it was for people who excel who like doing multiple things who like doing this that everything else but somewhere a few centuries later somebody came and joined, piggybacked it and said, Jack of all trades, master of none. Hello, Jack of all trades, master of none. And then people started joining these two sentences and they said, Jack of all trades, master of none. 
So it almost became that, oh, if you're acting and if you're storytelling and if you're in a corporate job and that means uh, your time is divided and all. Who are you to decide? Who are you to decide that? When I'm acting, I am 100% Vijay's mom in Gilly. master of none but thanks to Instagram I saw one story and it made me go deeper saying this is not the full jack of all trades master of none but often better than master of one of doing so many things. I decided no. I, when I was approached by Trichy and IT to give a TED talk, I struggled. I said, TED talk, Chi Chi Chi, what have I done? I went into this imposter syndrome, all these new names that we keep hearing, no, all the time. It didn't, it didn't feel quite, you know. I would almost felt that when I heard Jay Kumar sir and Shantanu speaking here. And I said, no, they've called me for a reason. I'll go and do my job of whatever I need to share with the students. And then seeing Abhiram look at the book gave me that confidence. I said, yeah, that's me. That's me. So coming back to that, jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes better than master of one. I decided to give my TED talk on the most important story of my life of who I came to be and how I am proud of wearing all those. So one day you will see me sharing a story for Kutis. One day you will sh uh, see me sh uh, sharing the story of the other Sita which I have written being inspired by a lot of texts from the Ramayana. The moment I, I share the same name you see, Janaki and Sita are inseparable. So I need, but there is a story. There is a story why I do the other Sita and I'll tell you why. Because one lady, one auntie, I don't even remember who, where, what, but she said, Pair in a coin there. I said, Janaki. So she said, Oh. I said, No. <laughs> she said, Janaki in a pair of which you have to undergo a lot of things. I said, What? <laughs> what? Who? Who said that? So do you realize that a story has traveled somewhere, somebody, so it was almost like who was the Sita? Did she really undergo whatever that is given to us? And I wanted to approach, I wanted to see a lot of text, so I started reading. And that is when I realized that learning never stops. I can continue for another 10, 20, 30 years and I will still not know enough about Sita. Because she is an ocean and the Ramayana is something that has traveled. The first Ramayana I heard was from my party. She didn't have a book. So all of us who have learnt Ramayana or the Mahabharata or any epic for that matter, we have heard it because we listen. Right now you can hear the hum right of the AC. You can hear some, some you know, all those. That is hearing, that is physical. But you're listening to me, you're investing your time with me and that is what I ask each one of you students here to do. Because the greatest gift that you can give yourself today is time. Time with yourself. You will make mistakes, failures. You know Ruskin Bond? Yes? Who is he? Author. He's uh, recently... Uh, I don't know how recent it is, a few months back, uh, 
lived life i think how to live your life he's written a book and he talks about failures he says failures will happen move on i mean he's had he's written so many books and he's talking about failure and he says worry please don't say i don't have any worries then that is a worry <laughs> you should be worried what am i supposed to do constant questioning within yourself because one day you will like this one day you will like something else please explore and that's when i came across this beautiful philosophy in japanese corporate life called kaizen kaizen it's actually in the corporate but i like to apply it to myself it is something for improvement if i can improve myself by 1% every day if i'm telling you a story today how can i improve that story tomorrow how can i improve only by one person i'm not asking you to you know pour into books and do all that do all your research and how do you achieve this kaizen by another beautiful japanese word called renshudani i came across this when i was you know i've been pouring over books and of course google because mata pita google they want that you know what is please substitute panita because a lot of people who don't have gurus go to google ren shudani is nothing but practice whatever you are doing writing drawing mandala architecture um, you just want to maybe you've already got the startup idea persist on that you know what we it's all like verticals no but it's okay come and visit those verticals as students you have the whole life in front of you if you give up now that's it you can put full stop you end up see i'm not saying tomorrow you should not be a government servant or you should not have a 9 to 5 job if that is what gives you happiness please do it but on the 9 to 5 job a 9 to 5 job a paranga at least put your 150% into that because then we will have better roads then we will have better amenities because there is somebody who is working very hard it's like this career udyog what is it written work to become and not to acquire you will acquire a lot of skills but you will become somebody only when you put your heart and soul into it okay what is fomo fear of missing out what is fomo fear of missing out i want to ask that Do you know whether they are still thinking of food or they are listening to me? <laughs> What is FOMO? Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out. So I had this morning. I had to be in Balasya Mandir to inaugurate their lit uh, surf, which was a literary fest, and which is why I came late. So if you have FOMO and you feel that that person is doing something more than me, which is what we all have, because that is what social media does to us. when you start scrolling you feel oh, this one is actually so much he's gone and done this she's gone and done that what if we change it if we tweak it to friends of my own it's not going to trend on social media i'm just sharing what i i felt a eureka moment i said friend of my own could be my book friends of my own could be my immediate friends but all this happens only when you sit with yourself journal and want to share your story so it all comes back to story tell right now you are all listening to me because there was a beginning i started with a story middle is when i kind of meandered i went into some little jargons which i know will catch attention and i am now going to be ending my speech and asking for any questions that i can answer but story is important i did a corporate job for 20 years i sold a concept called digital cinema i worked in one of the most beautiful organizations and i sold digital cinema to theater owners in the length and breadth of our country from north south east west where i didn't even have a product to show i can only show a demo and that too when the theater is closed and maybe in we hours of the morning but i took it as a challenge when somebody says it cannot be done do it 
show it. And that's how inventions have happened. When my daughter was growing up, I used to throw books all around her. She used to crawl, take up a book. I raised a reader and today she's co-authored a book with me. So I think, thank you, I will pass it on to her. And why do I want to share a story? Because I want people to read that story and say, that felt nice. My first book is about an ostrich who stammers and is unable to tell his story in the Jungle Storytelling Festival. And how he tells his story is the picture book. And it's a picture book not just for us, I mean not just for goodies. I feel it teaches me a lot of it. And it all happened because I listened to a little boy like Abhiram who said, I want a story of an ostrich. I didn't have a story. He said, write it. <laughs> Non-challenging, he said, write it. Huh? Okay, I'll write. And I thought, oh, I'm a storyteller, I can write. It took me two years. How do I balance picture and text? Do so much of text. Publisher said, so much of text. No, it is not a picture book. It will become a chapter book. I said, ah, correct. The next one, I had an idea about lost recipes. Just like he spoke about, you know, we've lost the pride. We've lost the pride in our own recipes. They don't realize that they are sitting on something more precious than any inherited property. That rasam recipe, you will get only if she makes the rasam. Do you realize? Or any man who's, who loves making rasam. Because my husband does. So it is the story of a little girl called Malli who loves her party's rasam. And one day the party is not there. And she wants to make the rasam. How will she get the recipe? So party's rasam is all about that lost recipe. And during the pandemic, we saw how many men, how many women, how many tatas, parties, uncles, aunts, everybody became a cook, a chef, right? Why wait for a pandemic? If you have that as an interest, cultivate it. So, to just give you a net, uh, three things that I want you to take away is never say no to opportunities. Please. My father said, go, participate, win panade. Participate, but never say no to opportunities because it will teach you some experience that you can take away. Second, believe in the people who believe in you. There will be that one friend, that will be one, one parent who will push you and you will be, it's like that swimming, no? You're almost there and you want to tell you, and once you push, then you swim as if you've been swimming all your life. And the third, is what I think Jay Kumar sir was saying. Stay curious. Why? Ask this question. Why? Yeah. Ah. So now do kuncha homework. Having said that, I I admire my biggest cheerleader is my 93-year-old mother-in-law, Sita Lakshmi Zubramanya, who will turn 94 in a few days, who is for the nth time reading Ponyan Sir. I ask her, I cannot explain. You have to read it. You have to experience it. Experience life. Stay curious. Believe in the people who believe in you. And never say no to opportunities. Thank you so much.
Preeti chanced upon her career in fitness and functional training when she was looking for a way to not only stay fit but focus energies purposefully. From starting off as a functional fitness coach in Hyderabad to completing all necessary global renowned certifications, she set up the first F45 franchise in Chennai in December 2016. F45 went on to become a super hit in our Chennai, leading her to start Monday Monk, inculcating evolved and holistic fitness regimes in early 2019. An active mental health advocate and sustainable lifestyle promoter, she's made it her aspiring vision to positively impact as many lives as possible in the holistic wellness space. We welcome you to take the stage and address the gathering. Can we have a round of applause, please? and scholars before me, I start feeling nervous because we are more about action and less about words uh, and what we do. Uh, so if I may ask all of you to just stand up for a minute before we go to eat, I also want to make sure that all of you are active <laughs> because I'm from the fitness stage, yes. so this is something that we do. Thank you so much. Yeah, wherever you have space. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, please, don't worry, please. That's fine. So, you can be seated, no problem. Thank you. So, I would like all of you to uh, try something. Let's try to balance ourselves on left leg. Just adjust yourself and try to balance on your left foot. And once you are adjusted, just close your eyes. I'm going to count five. Five. Four. Eyes closed. Three. Two. One. Great. Now let's try it on the other side. Let's try it on the right foot. Adjust yourself. Close your eyes. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You can sit down now. Did you understand anything from this? Okay, I'll wait for you all to settle down and be quiet. Did you understand anything from this? Did you feel more balanced on one side and less balanced on the other side? Yes! How many of you felt that? That's something that you have to balance in life. So basically, when your body is balanced, a lot of times we actually don't know that we are not balanced and healthy in the body. The reason why sports and fitness is extremely important no matter what career you're, you're pursuing, no matter what jobs you're doing, what whatever you want to do in life, you still need the basics, which is fitness and health in mind and body. Right? You all agree with me? Yes. Yes. So the side that is not balanced is something that you got to balance. Now let's try some the same thing with breathing, shall we? Just use your index finger and blow your breath out from your nose with your mouth closed. Do you see more coming out of one nostril? Is one nostril stronger in the exhalation than the other? Yes. Yeah, so that is also something which a lot of balanced people have. They balance the masculine and the feminine side. And that also comes through pranayama, through breathing. And these things are very, very important for just one reason. No matter what you're doing, how many hours you're working, or what you're pursuing, or what you're going to achieve in this world, you need that balance to stay focused and have patience and perseverance. And it's really, really important. But to me, it was not all glory. I actually did my mechatronics engineering because I was pushed to do it like most parents do. 
we only had one option in my family. It was either engineering or medicine. So we had to choose one of them. And I chose engineering. But obviously I was one of those people who was also good at academics. So I never really liked failure. I think I was somebody who just wanted to like get done with it. And after that I started thinking. Why did I do this? I don't, I, don't, I don't see myself being an engineer. I don't see myself doing any of this. And I asked my father for one, one small favor. I told him that I want a year off. I don't want to do anything for one year. Please let me be. Let me think. Let me also understand what I want to do after this. So I took a break for a year. And that opened up so many opportunities for me. I tried everything that I wanted to do. I became a dance instructor. I became an event manager. I interned at a market research firm. I understood that, I understood that marketing was one of my strengths. I liked interacting with people. And then I decided that I want to do an MBA. I want to do my master's in business administration. And that's when I actually excelled in life. I did it with a full heart and I did it with so much of perseverance. Every morning I was there on time for every class. In engineering I was the worst student ever. <laughs> I was known for not having attendance. I was known for not being alert in class. Whereas in, when it came to MBA I was I was able to help a lot of people along with me. I was good in academics and because I liked events, they made me the event planner in, in the college and I was the one running all the events for the college. I was mostly not present in the classrooms, but I would make sure that I did my classwork after you know all my extracurricular activities were done. But little did I know that most of the things that I was doing part-time, which was, I was also a uh, along with being a dance instructor, I was also a Zumba instructor by then while I was studying in college and I was also planning events and I was working over the weekends with my event management company and I didn't know that this would actually be my main career and after that I just took, took up a corporate job because I was, uh, I, I, was uh, I happened to be a gold medalist in my MBA so I got a really good offer and my parents wanted me to take it up. I started working as an oil and gas analyst and after an year and a half, I just felt that I just didn't want to sit at this desk from 9 to 5. Let me do something else. My fitness was obviously going out of the window and I was feeling lethargic. I didn't want to feel that way because I was always, always an active person and I liked movement. I went and spoke to my boss in that company and said, why are you still working for this company? Why did you not think about starting your own market research for me? He said, because there's, there's no partner who will manage it for me. I'm good at technical stuff, but I want somebody to manage it and to run it. I said, I'm the one. Let's start it. So we came out of that in a an year and a half and we started our own market research distribution portal. And we ran it for four years successfully. But again, I had to work in different shifts. So I was working in the Europe and US shifts. Unfortunately, again, my circadian rhythm was all over the place. I, w I was one of those people who would wake up with the sun and not eat after the sunset. But life changed and I didn't like it again. I said, okay, you know what? This time, I'm just going to do what my heart says. And then I walked out of that firm and I started as a fitness coach. I said, I'm going to go try a nice class and see if I like it. So I went to all the gyms that were there in Hyderabad. I tried different concepts. And I ended up in F45. It was like a fun fair. I just loved the whole concept of it being non-repetitive every single day. And I loved, it, loved the feeling of not having a monotonous workout every day. And they also liked my form because I started working out when I was 17 years old. And 
I without me knowing that all these part time jobs are that I was doing, which was actually literally paying me two thousand rupees a month. That's all. That's all I used to make um, in two thousand seven. And I said, okay, let me just uh, take this up. Let me see. And I started working as a coach. And really, really, like it just made me feel so content at the end of the day. The feeling of joy I have never known. that kind of feeling when i was actually sitting at the desk and looking into the computer it was something that that really evoked you know all my senses to a completely different level and i kept on learning because i just i just love 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 being a student i i still love being a student i still learn from my team uh, we hire different people from different fitness backgrounds and we just love interacting and learning from each other and there are so many fitness concepts it would be so difficult to even list down all of them to you it's that difficult there's so many coming coming up every single day it's like medicine right health and fitness and um, yeah there was no looking back i worked as a coach and i slowly started helping that studio admin i slowly started helping that studio manager and then i was helping them with social media and i was like okay i'm helping i'm able to do all this because i have the background of mba so i never regretted it i never looked back and thought oh i you know actually wasted all this time um and i just really like enjoyed enjoyed doing what i was doing and after that there was no looking back i took over the franchise for tamil nadu the first one brought the flagship store to chennai and we started the second one in nilangrai after a year and a half and that's when i started noticing that people were stressed day in and day out people who were really really successful people who were running some of the best businesses in chennai were walking in and out of the fitness studios with the same amount of stress so that one hour of sweat and movement was actually not helping these people be better human beings they were walking out and being impatient in traffic they were walking out and fighting with the auto wala or the wale guy and they were constantly under pressure to perform is that a good thing no so what was lacking i can't hear patience patience happiness happiness what is peace peace relaxation relaxation calmness okay a lot of people were actually not happy no matter where they were if someone someone loses 5 kgs he's not happy because he didn't lose the other 5 <laughs> somebody loses a little bit of fat on their hips they're not happy that the belly fat is still not yet gone so they're only looking at what something they don't have something they don't have right so that's the thing that's when i realized that there is a huge demand for holistic fitness and wellness where it's not about a before and after picture it's not about selling a transformation which is only physical people have to be more efficient more joyful more content more productive feel happy and feel in peace at peace with their relationships at work at home and that's what was necessary not beating people up not crashing them not being really hard on them and killing them is that a workout no what is a workout then when do you feel like you actually sweat it out and you what do you feel after that great you feel great right after you play sport for an hour after you run for an hour after you do any kind of physical activity after you swim you feel great you feel amazing you have to feel that way that is important and that is real fitness real fitness is about how what you just saw balancing your body balancing enduring stamina enduring something for a longer time being patient for a longer time being consistent and showing up whether you work out for 15 minutes or 1 hour 
it doesn't matter based on your feeling you can take it forward that's all balancing your breath and all of this this is real fitness real fitness is not idolizing six pack abs it's not idolizing trithik roshan's biceps <laughs> you are you're not going to get it for sure right you know why because you're not pursuing that career are you no 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 it takes a lot to get there but but remember everything you see on social media is not real do you all know that yeah i'm so happy that you all know that yeah right whatever you see on social media is not real and social media i mean if you use it wisely it's amazing you make connections global connections that you would have never thought you would you would probably sell your product to somebody sitting in spain and that's amazing but at the same time if you are browsing and eventually ending up idolizing or wanting to you know what actually more than imitating people get intimidated right yes. do you when you browse too much you get intimidated for what you are not that's what it usually shows people if you get inspired that's amazing that's great if you get inspired and you get up and start doing something because you saw it how many of you actually see all those workouts and all those you know sweaty sessions on social media and just drop your phone down there and go and sweat it out how many of you have done that before yeah exactly great we have to clap for these four students here who actually do it you know that's drawing inspiration that's drawing inspiration and for me too i was a private person i was never on social media but for my job i had to be on social media to put my workout there my team's workout there to do a lot of to show people to share knowledge to make them aware of what we are because i know that our customers are there so we are on it but you know if i was a banker i would have never been on social media right i would have done something else with that time and even that time that we spent has to be minimized to a few minutes say 15 to 20 minutes if you have to sell something say what you know share that knowledge put it out there and drop it later the time that we waste on browsing you know actually we didn't have all those gadgets i mean we did have but we didn't have um we weren't allowed to use them at home or in college so thankfully i have to be thankful to my parents and my teachers so make sure that you use that time to do something else i would love to talk like all motivational speakers and say follow your heart that's where everything is but at the same time you also need to understand your families and your individual financial goals if you know if money is important or not it's not it's not wrong to make money it is important to make it it gives you a sense of freedom and it gives you a sense of security to actually pursue something later in life do you all agree yes. you need it right you obviously have to have the basics and if you think that you have you can afford 2 years or 3 years to put it on your creative juices and actually excel at something then amazing you should go for it but i would say that whatever i've done in my career the mainstream actually helped me become what i am today to start from ground zero i had i went through a, a lot of lot of difficulties especially when we uh, when i first came to chennai i literally started at zero at 30 and the first studio all my finances went into it everything that i had i even mortgaged the one house i had and it was a do or die situation we started in december 2016 we actually launched on 3rd december and 5th december jailal tha passed away and i said oh my god first day monday so third was a saturday 
I said, I am not closing, shutting the studio down. Let anything happen. Even if one client is coming, I'm going to keep it open. And then Varda happened the same month, in the next 10 days. And then Christmas, New Year holidays, and after that, Jellica to happen. So you can imagine, I had to actually start making money from December to survive because I put everything that I had into this studio. And I'm not that person who will go and ask anyone for help, not even my parents. So it was a do or, do or I mean, it's not easy. I'm just trying to tell you that a lot of people that you see today who've really followed their hearts have not had it the best way. That I can tell you for sure. They've gone through a lot of struggles. It's not easy. But at the same time, once you achieve and once you actually take that step and put in all your hard work, people can see it. People see quality and value. Once you're able to give it in any city, anywhere in the world, people will see it and people will take notice and people will come to you. You actually can probably even do something that's done for the 10th time. A lot of innovations are happening today. No product is really new, no service is really new, but it's just the way you do it and just how consistent and patient you are. So what I would like to say today is stay long-term focused because patience is actually very, very less in today's generation. A lot of people have ADHD, 80% 80 of them. We are, we're working with corporates, we work with them every day to just make sure that they are more focused at what they're doing. And those are the kind of movements, those are the kind of breath work, those are the kind of you know, different kinds of modes of programs that we have to create for them, just for them to stay focused, at least for six hours from nine to five. So make sure that you're focused and you have something that you're doing for long term. And at the same time, you're also following your passion and putting in an hour or two doing something that you love. And you can always excel at that. Thank you so much. so much Ms. Deepthi for sharing your journey with us. It was very insightful to hear you. Um, so a, a, a funnily, a, a teacher was mentioning downstairs saying you started off with a max period, you had history, geography and you even had PT to finish the <laughs> position, right? It was not planned that way. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I invite uh, Mrs. Analakshmi Kumanan from GOD USA to honor Ms. Deepthi. all of you for coming here today and patiently being with us. Uh, my respectful pranams and uh, thanks for um, the, to, to all the speakers who patiently being with us today and uh, shared their stories and life lessons. And it's, it's such an honor to be amongst all of you today.